Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Treat. My boy, my boy, my boy. What's going on? Oh man, it's been a great week. I uh, I got to see my mom, my little brother. They came through. Uh, we didn't really do much, much. Just kind of stayed local. But uh, yeah, you know, it was just nice to have the time off, just to see him and stuff like that. That's all you need sometimes, man. Yeah. Yeah, just do local stuff. It's fun. Yeah, I'm I'm a boring person, dude. I don't yeah, do, I, don't I, like, I, don't I don't like do. I sometimes I just want to chill. Dude, that's that's the way to do it, man. Yeah, chilling well, is better. What about you? How you been? You know, been same old shit. I released a short film. Did you I see it? Saw it. You saw dude, it? it. Turned out real good. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Did, did you say so you liked it? Huh? I watched it with my little brother actually. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. I'm he good. was he was like, what? what? What's going on? Like, it's just he didn't know it was. I was like, it's a horror movie. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> a complete one eighty. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that more in our recently seen, because that's my recently seen. I'll just talk about that. You're talking about your, your own <laughs> my movie? My own movie. <laughs> um. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. I was bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. News might just be something I love. Back to you, fuckers. All right. Uh, There's so much stuff to get to. So much stuff Obviously, to get to. Obviously, everyone should know it's, it's uh, Comic-Con. Yes, Comic Con dude has kind of uh, been nuts so far. Um, every year uh, when Comic Con happens, the movie news kind of gets absolutely insane. All these new trailers are released, and all this new news comes out, and all that all that crazy stuff. Uh, before we get into the news, though, I just want to say thoughts and prayers oh. to the Kyoto animation. That I knew that would hit you hard. Like that's the, uh, obviously our. It was our an house. attack. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Uh, coward. Mm -hmm. Uh, dude, I heard, uh, obviously because, you know, we, I live in a house full of anime nerds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we've just been keeping up with it the whole time. Like first it was like one confirmed dead, then it turned into six and then it's like 30. So you were following it like live? Pretty oh, much. Pretty like much. every, every few hours we would, we would see what was going yeah, on. Yeah. I just it. heard about it yesterday. That's fucked And there's up. so many people that are still like, like unaccounted for really and obviously like you're not going to be able to, f to to find to find them all yeah and that especially in that state but like 33 dead man i can't believe that that's horrible and it's, yeah and a bunch unconfirmed like it, this is it's nuts yeah they better find that guy or yes, girl whoever absolutely. did it that's horrible dude yeah it was an arson attack yes why would someone want to burn down an animation studio for like what that's so i, I don't even i don't even know man that's horrible, dude. Like that's just evil. People are just, people are fucking crazy. They they are, man. But that's just holy crap. Thought thoughts and prayers to Kyoto Animation because that's yeah, just absolutely. that's horrible. Thoughts and prayers to the victims and their families, their friends, their pets, a anyone that might be missing them. That's just hopefully justice is served to that guy because that's that's horrible. Mm -hmm. That's horrible. Also, thoughts and prayers to Simon Yam, the the actor, because you know he was stabbed on stage. There's a video of it and everything. Someone stabbed him on stage. Who, who, wait, who? Simon Yam, the uh, oh, Hong I, Kong actor. Oh, I did not hear about that. Yeah, yeah. They just stabbed him on stage. Freaking crazy, dude. And he's fine. Like, he survived. That's, like, that's good. They, they weren't life-threatening. But, yeah, dude, someone just stabbed him on stage. This has just been a, a, wow, a terrible week. People just... Sometimes I feel like this just happens. It's like... In cycles where just people lose their minds, and mm -hmm. it happens like everywhere. I know, dude. People are like losing their mind, dude. Is Mercury in retrograde right now? What's happening? It's so crazy, man. I don't know. I just thought we should mention that because, again, that that's just sad. That's just super mm -hmm. sad, and we just we we have to send our prayers to those to those people because we just got to, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, let's get into the news here. Uh, Here's an intro. All right, let's cheer up a little bit. Yeah, let's yeah. cheer up a little bit. All right, get it. let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, here's some crazy news. What is this? Uh, I didn't expect this to happen. Uh, Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach are writing the Barbie movie. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Those are like two. This is like heavy hitters right there. Yeah. With Margot Robbie as the Never star. Never expected that to be the 
Like, I don't know, man. I'm, this, this Barbie movie is starting to turn into artistic direction. I know, right? See, Greta Gerwig, I can kind of see, because it's like, I could see that she has that kind of youthful sensibility. You know, she's a girl. Maybe she grew up with Barbie, whatever. But Noah Baumbach, first of all, aren't they dating Ger- Greta Gerwig and Noah know. Baumbach? I think they are. I think they're a couple. But anyway, Noah Baumbach, that's a name I never in a million years would have attached to the Barbie movie. I don't know, man. If that that actually changes things, yeah. If, if if they are dating, because because uh, you know you get to bounce ideas off of each other and stuff like that. And next yeah. thing you know, like he he comes up with a really good idea for it. Boom. Yeah, that's they're, true. That's true. I'm gonna look this up just because I wanna I wanna confirm it. Either way, they're both pretty great talents. I haven't seen like Francis Ha or like uh, the Mayowitz like, stories, but. Oh, the Mar- Yeah, I, that's great. Are they good? That's great. I haven't seen Francis Ha. That's on my list. Yes, Greta. He is dating Greta Gerwig. Yes, from since two two thousand eleven. That's the thing, though. And when you're like dating somebody, you just start talking about work. Work is a big thing. And then yeah. if you've got two people in the same industry, they're just going to be working on the same thing. That's true. That's true. I wonder what it is about this Barbie movie that has them uh, intrigued. I feel like they're gonna. It's got to be something, right? It's got to be something interesting. Hmm. hmm. I wonder what it's gonna be. Maybe he's gonna he's gonna be the. He's going to be writing the male character or something. Ken, yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this when they announced it, how I was kind of cynical about it, like, for, like, a second. But then I'm like, wait a second, stop being an asshole. It's like, Barbie means something to girls the same way Spider-Man means something to me. So it's like, what's the difference, you know? It's no, like, yeah. You know? I mean, obviously, there's, you know, there's things where it's like, we just, we won't get it, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, like, the thing about being a critic, because everyone has something that they're just not a fan of. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. Right. We can't right. all like everything. Exactly. But at the same time, you can't just write off something immediately, you know. Absolutely. You know. So even even with uh, Barbie coming out, you, you just can't, like, write it off completely. Especially with names like Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach attached to it. Because now, now I'm really intrigued. I mean, I'm interested, for yeah. sure. Now we got the cinephiles on board. Now you're like, okay, Barbie movie. Yeah. Now you got my attention. Yeah, they'll they'll. I feel like some people people like that will bring a more uh, accessible yes uh, perspective to it. What do you think? As the, like you expecting like a comedy kind of thing? Like what are you expecting? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Not yeah. a clue. I'm not even gonna try to guess. Me neither. I don't, I don't know why one of them just doesn't direct it at this point. I mean, some one of them should just direct it. Just wait. Like Greta Gerwig should direct next it next week. Yeah, right? That's, sweet. that's true, that's Greta true. Gerwig. Greta Gerwig directs... Uh, Remember back in the day when we used to be able to just predict everything that would happen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that hasn't happened in a while. But this this week has changed. I, I will say... Yeah, I know, right? I will say something about this year, movie-wise, is like, there's been a lot of unexpected, just like, terrain being explored by directors, you know? Yeah. Like, um... Uh, Quentin Tarantino in talks to do a Star Trek movie, like, never in a million years would I thought that would have happened. A sequel to Django... Like, that's crazy, even. Mm. Um, a J- and not only is it that, but it's a Django Zorro crossover. And then you're like, what? Like, there's a lot of really unexpected terrain. Freaking, f- uh, what's his name? Nicholas Ryan Reffin wanting to do Batgirl. It's like, you get a lot of, you're, you're getting a lot of, uh, that, yeah. Yeah, a lot of no, unexpected. Sure. Yeah, a lot of unexpected in 2019. Which is weird, because that's where a lot of the news is coming from. But, like, yeah. gotta help, uh. That has nothing to do with why you don't like this year for movies. No, 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 no. I'm d- the reason I don't like this year for movies is because of the actual movies coming out. Um, but a lot of that, too, is just because I haven't seen anything. Like, I just haven't. I've been so busy that I haven't been able to we're, see. We're going to have to get you out there. Actually, I know. Uh, you're not doing anything later. Maybe you'll see Mitt somewhere. Oh, Jake, yeah. Jake actually, there we go. Jake actually hit me up. He's like, dude, when are we going to see it again? Oh, there we go. There we go. I liked it a lot. So. I actually, but, oh, crap. You know what? I'm a, mm, I'm 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 gonna make a maybe? call. I'm gonna make a call to somebody, and then I'll see. Cause I'm a, I actually am supposed to hang out with somebody later. No problem. No problem. But uh, I'll have to be like, yo, we still doing that? And if she's like, oh, I can't. Uh, on air like, plans being made. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. I'll call her up, and if she's like, ah, oh, sorry, I can't. I'll be like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. But if she's like, yeah, let's do it. I'll be like, oh, okay, I can't can't see it. No, no problem. But I do want to see it though. Yeah, we'll get we'll get there. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, uh, Barbie movie, well, I, I'm intrigued. I yes. got one eyebrow raised. <laughs> got one eyebrow raised. I got two raised. All right, so here's, um, so here's some news. Caused a little bit of controversy, but I personally think, now this might surprise you, I think this controversy might be a little unnecessary. Hmm. Now hear me out. So have you heard about Lashana Lynch possibly being the new uh, yep. 007? 
Oh, being the new double, I saw that she is cast in there, but no, no, no. She she's cast as the new 007, potentially. Like that's like a, the, the strong. Wait, really? Inclination. Because yeah. I, I went to the wiki page, like, and I saw that you know, obviously da- Daniel Craig's yeah. still on there. Yes, he is. And then I saw saw her as like somebody else. Yeah. Maybe she, they like this is like a segue into. She's her. not the new James Bond. Like she's not the new Jane Bond. Mm-hmm. She's. A new character who is the new 007. Oh. So, so is this the mo- a movie that's going to segue into her becoming it? Like we, next movie? We don't know that yet. Okay. I hope personally they don't do that because 007 is synonymous with James Bond. Here's what I think they're going to do. You saw Golden Eye, right? With Sean Bean. You know how he was 006? Uh-huh. They introduced the other 00s a couple times. Like 009 was in one of them. I think, yeah, 009 was in uh, one of them. And 006, uh, 004, I think, was also in one of the Roger Moore ones. Okay. And what I think ha- this movie is, I think, because Daniel Craig is a little older, I think he's retired, and I think there's a new 007. And I think that it's more of a story beat that's happening within the film. Mm. So I think he's not technically 007. He's not with the agency anymore. Instead of retiring that character, they're just going to ki- keep the character alive and just replace his character with somebody else is... I don't know, because I I might... See, I think it's more of a story beat within just this movie. I don't think they're going to carry it over into into a different person. I, I, I just don't think that. I think after this movie, they're going to reboot it again. Well, you know, maybe. Especially because Broccoli, that's her last name. Al, I think it was Albert Broccoli, who's, like, who's been the lifelong producer of... Um, Excuse me, of uh, James Bond, and then once he died, his his daughter took over. Mm-hmm. With her in charge, I don't think I think she's always going to have James Bond be James Bond. I think this is more just a one off story beat where it's like James Bond is not 007 anymore. There's a new 007, and it's kind of like an old versus new going at it mentality. You know, I think that's going to be like a major plot point in the storyline, or at least a major character beat. Yeah, you know, where maybe he's like. He has to team up with the new 007 to do something, and it's kind of like a clashing of new versus old, you know? Yeah. It could be interesting like that, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm for it. That's a, that, that's what I think with Shauna Lynch. And then, uh, you know, you got, you know, some people are upset because they think that she's going to replace Daniel Craig and be the new James Bond in an entire new series going forward, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think this is like a Sean Bean type thing, like, like a 006 type thing. She might even turn out to be the villain in the end. Watch, like, you know, just kind of like Pro- GoldenEye. I mean, probably not, given the fact that you already got, like, two villains in it. That's true, that's true, that's true. But still, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, but, I mean, it's interesting. I'm curious. Yeah. Call me Steph Curious. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's cool. Anything you want to add? Is that, is that it? Uh, I don't really know too much about it. Uh, it just seems like it's, uh, we're just kind of theorizing at this point. Yeah. But, uh, Cool. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> interesting that she really doesn't have that much of a filmography. I mean, pretty much that tells me that people liked her in Captain Marvel. They're like, hey, just throw her in something. Yeah, yes, that's that's true. And uh, speak, there's going to be more Captain Marvel news coming up. Especially, oh, yeah. you know, kind of regarding this actress as well, actually. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm interested. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll, we, we will just have to see. For sure. All right. Babylon. I, d- I don't know what that meant. You don't know when what you that said, meant? When you said that, I typed it in. I'm like, I'm not seeing shit for this. All right, well, here's the thing. I'm going to look this up here. So, excuse me while I make weird sounds. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, just because I want to get the, the story right, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, dude, the next thing that you sent me. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Take out wa- watching TV <laughs> while running to do it. Four, four. Okay, well, we'll just <laughs> we'll get to we'll that. get to that when we come to it. <laughs> Let's talk about Babylon now. Okay, what we got? Damien Chazelle, okay. next Ooh. film Babylon Ooh. is going to reunite him with Emma Stone. First details: According to Deadline, Brad Pitt is also circling a role in Damien Chazelle's 
new movie. Plot details for Babylon are remaining under wraps. Deadline reports that the film is not a musical, but is a bold auteur piece with a significant budget. According to Variety, the film is set in Hollywood during the 1920s as the industry transitions from silent films to talkies. Oh my god. The script blends together real people from the time with fictional characters similar to Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Dude. Yes. Singing in the Rain too. Singing in the Rain too, but without the musical, which is strange. That is strange. But it's funny because when you say Damien Chazelle, you immediately think Emma Stone. Yeah, you're like okay, and uh, and then you think of um, uh, you know 1920s kind of golden age Hollywood kind of film, mm-hmm. you know, kind of iconography, which is what he's known for. Wonder if instead, because there is a. Uh, like Footlight Parade is like a pretty famous one where it's the same the same subject uh, is transitioning from silent films to talkies, mm-hmm. and it doesn't it's not like really a musical. I mean, it has musical numbers and they mm-hmm. have like a lot of like choreography and stuff like that. Like they have you know the the classic uh, people in the in the water swimming around in circles and stuff like that. That yeah. kind of choreography. Yeah. But it doesn't have like singing you, musical. You mean numbers. kind of like the Busby Berkeley kind of. Yeah, yes. like choreography, yeah. Um, here's the thing that... And, and you know, I shouldn't say it because Damien Chazelle, I said the same thing, I said the exact same thing about his last film was, this is retreaded territory. Like, this is territory that we've seen before so many times. Yeah, Damien Chazelle seems to kind of... Um, he kills it every time, you know? Yeah, for sure. First man, you know? I mean, I was like, really? We need another Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong movie, like another one? And, uh, but he brought something kind of new to the table. And, and then it, it turns out we did need it. And it turns out we did need it. And this might be the same. Because that was my first thought. I thought that about La La Land, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you was, don't even like musicals. I don't even like, like musicals, him. but I really like La La Land. Uh, and that was one of the things, too. I'm just like, uh, when uh, they announced this movie, Babylon, I was like, oh, man, we're doing this again. Like, I mean, the artist singing in the rain. Like, we've already touched upon this so many times, you know. But maybe he can bring something new to the table. Perhaps. And uh, for fans of Golden Age Hollywood, because he is very much a fan of Golden Age Hollywood, Mm -hmm. I think we'll probably really friggin' love it. I'm sure we will. I mean, at the very least, even if it doesn't bring anything new, he just is really good at making feel-good movies. Yes. I mean, minus Whiplash, obviously. That's a feel-bad movie, but it's still (laughs) fucking good. (laughs) It could kind of be interpreted as a feel good movie at the end I guess sort of. I guess sort it's of. a little reaching it's it kind of it's one of those like at what cost like yeah. type thing yeah yeah for sure for sure um why how come whenever I picture this film I f- just picture it in black and white and I don't know why uh because it's set in the 1920s and it's about silent films going to talkies yeah I don't know well, why but... it's probably gonna be like it, just because you know he's he, he, auteur and stuff yeah. like that it's gonna like be in black and white until like the jazz singer comes out or like or uh some some movie comes out within its world yeah and then it turns into to color oh you know what that would be a good idea yeah there you Damn, go you should call him up right now no, i got you call up damien right now uh, no mm-hmm. i work for free you work for free i work for free I'm, damien I'm if the you're listening man damien if you're listening just take tea kettle's idea just add a special thanks credit and you'll be good mm-hmm. you'll be good yeah all right so Cool stuff. Cool stuff. I can't wait for it. I think it'll be good. Yeah. Take out watching TV with running to do it for four while Akira is indefinitely. Well, okay, so can you break that down for me, please? All right, well, first of Obviously, all... Obviously, Ak- Akira, or yeah. Akira is going to be a thing. Well, um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, all right, well, first of all, before I dive into what it means, this might be retreaded news, now that I think about it, because I was writing this news as the week progressed. Mm-hmm. So, we'll just add... We'll, we'll talk about the latter half of this. Okay, so what it is is Taika Watiti returning to do Thor 4 while Akira is on hold indefinitely. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. Yes. I could not have got that from that. <laughs> yeah, well, you could see Talk to Text. Well, because, a... because Talk to Text doesn't understand what Taika Watiti is. Yeah, Taika Watiti. Take out why. <laughs> <laughs> take out watching TV while running to do it for four. <laughs> take out watching TV. I'm going to call... That's his name. Now. Take out watching TV. It's his new name. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Every time we talk about 
Uh, I'll Lundy. never remember that. I'll never remember that. But it's gonna be funny to me right now. Oh my moment. god! Take out what? Just think of um. Just th- it's easy. Just think of uh. Date night. <laughs> take out watching TV. Take out watching TV. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, why is this so hot all the time? Oh, let me just do dude. this. No, that's hotter. <laughs> all the gain down. How we? Oh. At? Where we at? It's like. We weren't peaking or anything, but I just, I'm so nervous every time it's, like, almost there. Oh, like some clipping or whatever? Some clipping, because sometimes when we laugh, like, <laughs> like we, I just clipped right there. Like, big time. That's, that's all right. Yeah, so, anyway. Yeah, so let's talk about more uh, Akira being put on hold. Man, this movie's never going to get made, dude. Uh, you know they've been trying to make a live-action Akira movie for, like, years. For, like, 20 years, right? Yeah, probably. It's um, impossible. I remember uh, years ago, there was more, and this was post 9-11, like right post 9-11, and they really, first of all, they Americanized everything. They made it take place in New York mm-hmm. instead of Neo-Tokyo, and Ooh. it was a very heavy tribute to 9-11 where they actually had like beams going up into the sky, and that symbolized like two towers, and it was it was a very 9-11 post kind of patriotic you know, head yeah, state that that but film was in. You can kind of see it as tasteless, maybe. Maybe know. now, yeah. Because if you know, like there, there's kind of like a catastrophic angle to to Akira. I've actually never seen Akira. Yeah, so. at the end of the movie, it, like it's pretty catastrophic. Is so it? Maybe that's probably why. Yeah, yeah, that's probably why. Because nine eleven actually, um, nine eleven. Uh, I don't. How do I say this tastefully? I don't want to say put the axe in or killed or whatever. But nine eleven kind of stopped the production of. Uh, a lot of movies. Yeah. Even Megalopolis, right? Yeah, that's... I was just about to say that one. Yeah, like that... Like, um... The, at post-9-11, there was a lot of, um... Crazy scenarios that happened with films. I remember, uh... Zoo... What's the name? Sorry. Zoolander. With, mm-hmm. uh... Ben Stiller. Do you, you, you know what happened with that? No. Well, you know, there was an establishing shot of New York in that film. And that film was made in 2000, but it was being released post-9-11, 2001. Mm-hmm. And, um... Ben Stiller had to come up with a decision. He's like... What do I do with this establishing shot? Uh, do I paint out the t- Twin Towers or do I keep them there? And he said it was a lose-lose situation. Because as soon as you see the landscape of New York, you're going you're going to think about it. It's going to take you out of the film immediately. Yeah. So it's a lose-lose situation. But what he chose to do was remove them. He, he painted them out. You know, so... Mm. And he, he came under fire for that, but other people said it was okay. You, I mean, couldn't you just make, do another establishing shot? Yeah, I know, right? Why didn't he just... You know, yeah, reshoot or it. like remove it. I, I don't know how integral that establishment because I don't. Was. I don't think too many people w- would even notice it, like because you know you have so much, you have so many things going on in the movie. I'm not saying like they wouldn't notice. I'm saying like if they did another one, mm-hmm. I mean it'd be less conspicuous than than painting it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's but, true. But that brings up an interesting thing about about film is like. What happens in the real world really does dictate, like, yes. a lot of what's going on, what's being shown, and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think it's evident, too, much more in certain genres, how life kind of, uh, you know, dictates where films go. Especially with horror. Like, horror is a, is usually, like, a very, very um, grim reflection of reality. Mm-hmm. I think John Carpenter even said it. I mean, this is just fact, but, you know, when the Atomic Age horror was happening, that was just a lot of people's fear of nuclear holocaust and that's why i mean that's what godzilla, godzilla literally was, was. Yeah. godzilla was the birth of that atomic mm-hmm. war um obviously universal monsters were uh during a different time period and uh you know horror has always kind of reflected us as a society you know like when the slasher films were uh more prevalent that kind of symbolized like people's fear of their neighbor you know, when human horror was kind of the thing. Mm-hmm. When a lot of... The, that was definitely symbolizing the turning of the tide with people, you know. For sure. And, uh, yeah. But, um, we can get into that. Like, a, like that would be a whole different conversation in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It really does kind of affect, uh, you know, you know, the movies. Okay. So, Akira, like, what... It's just never going to... Do you even think they should make a live-action Akira? Do you I mean, think there's no. potential there? No. Well, I mean, no. I don't think anything live-action anime... I think it's 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 a no-go. It's a death because, sentence. Because you got people that look at that stuff and they have certain expectations for it. And then you have people that 
really don't care about the stories that are being told within anime. Yeah. And so, like, the market, there's not really a market there for it. Mm -hmm. You have basically people going to see it to see, like, how bad it is. The anime people that go to see it to see how bad it turned out. Yeah. Yes, which I've had friends that do did that for, for Ghost in the Shell, and they mm -hmm. left. Yeah. They left the teeter. Really? <laughs> yeah, they were appalled. Dang, uh, you know, Brian, Brian mentioned actually likes that movie. Mm -hmm. I thought that movie was pretty decent, too. He, I, saw, he saw it with Jake. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dang. That's crazy. I bet Jake, Jake really Jake, hated it. Jake didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, I have no affiliation with Ghost in the Shell, so I saw it with Mitch, and Mitch was actually a Ghost in the Shell fan, and um, he liked it, too, but I, I liked it, but it is forgettable. I already forgot everything that happens in that film. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like literally, the only thing I remember is, like, Scarlett Johansson fighting robot geek, what are they called, geishas? Something like that. Yeah, that's all I remember. Like, I, 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 need, I definitely need to rewatch mm -hmm. Ghost in the Shell. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to process in that movie. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Akira, so I, it's just never going to happen. It's just never going to happen, I don't think. It, yeah. That that film is literally in development hell. It's been in development hell for 20 years, and I don't think, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. no. Um, let's talk about one of my most anticipated reboots of all time. Uh, dude, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I can't tell if you're serious. Oh, I'm dead serious. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I was gonna say. I've never seen Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Me neither. I know of it. I know it's hilarious, and I know it's funny. Yeah. You know what? This is true. I swear this is true. I used to get, um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and, uh, what's the one with Feed Me Seymour? What is that? Uh, um, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. I used to get Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and Little Shop of Horrors mixed up all the time. I mean, I, I can't really see that. You can't see so, that? Yeah. Because they're both plant-based things, and it's about vegetables, even though to, uh, tomatoes are fruit, technically. Like, killing people and eating people. Isn't mm -hmm. it a Venus flytrap in a... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little shop of horse. Yeah. I mean, yeah, dude. I don't know. I used to get Rock, Rocky Horror Picture Show also mixed up with Little Shop of Horse. Now that I can see. Yeah. Now that, I don't know why. I don't know why, even though it has nothing to do with it's it. It's because it was released during like the same kind of time. and The name. And the name. Little Shop name. of Horrors, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. That's, you know? that's, that's what confused me. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, dude. I'm excited. Are you excited? Are you excited, T. Kel? Uh, let me see a Let me see a trailer, and then, we'll, <laughs> and then we'll talk. You can convince me. Like, you can convince me with, like, with B-movies. Yeah, this is one of the ultimate B-movies ever. Yeah. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. You know, but I heard that about Plan 9, and when I watched it, I was actually sorely, very disappointed in that movie. Oh, yeah? It was not nearly as funny as I expected it to be. Yeah, not nearly as, like, entertaining, like, so bad it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because mm -hmm. we... Because it's, I don't know what it is about this generation, but they they just think if you throw more at us, like, it'll be funnier. And mm -hmm. sometimes that works. And then when you have a movie that it has, like, almost nothing, it's basically just, like, vampires and aliens, like, crossovers. Yeah, it's like, yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah, well, that's kind of what they did with uh, Plan 9, though. It was, like, aliens resurrecting zombies. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. And it's and it's kind of, like, it's kind of minimal, Compared yep. to what we have now. Yeah. I don't know. So what, what, what did you have more fun? Uh, Black so, Dynamite. I no, well, Black Dynamite's great. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Black Dynamite's great. I thought that's what you are going to no, ask. No, I was going to ask, what did you have more fun watching, like, in a so bad it's good sense? Plan 9 or Event Horizon? Um... Oh, you see, th this is another thing. Uh -huh. you got to watch it with people. Yeah. I had a great time watching uh, Event Horizon. Yeah. Terrible movie. Terrible Hated movie. it. Yeah. Uh, but I had, a, I had a really good time with you guys. I watched yeah. it by myself. I watched Plan 9 by <laughs> oh, myself. No. That was... Uh, that might have been, been the mistake. That yeah, might have been the mistake. Might, that might make it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, just, I don't see anybody that I talk to thinking that's like a funny movie. I could watch Plan 9. I've never seen Plan 9. I would love to watch Plan 9. Oh, so. well, I would love to... Just, I'd love to sit... It threw it with you, you know but I don't know do? if I could. You know what we should do? We should watch it on the podcast and do a commentary live. Oh, boy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Putting yeah. that on the list. We're doing it. All right. Yeah. All right. Do you have it? Where did you watch it? Amazon. Amazon? Amazon's great, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Need to get it. But yeah, Attack of the... You know who I could see doing this? The new one? The guy who did Rubber. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just feel like he would be the guy to do this. Get, give me the guy who did Thanks Killing. Thanks, killing, yeah. Yes. Or the dude who did um, Zombievers. 
And then didn't he do drone? He's doing that drone movie too, yes, like Attack of the Killer Drones. I think that's what you're talking about. So stupid. That looked so dumb. But now that I think about it in hindsight, something about that movie sounds appealing to me. In the drone movie, I don't know what. It's like it, it's weird because those movies are technically critic proof because they know how stupid they are. So it's like, what do you? How do you criticize that? It's like, um, you, I guess you got to come at it with a with a, a sense of um. You gotta come at it with a sense of okay, how entertaining is it in a bad way? Like mm. that's such a weird like criteria. To see, throw see at a the film. Thi- the thing about it is when I know that a movie is like bad, mm-hmm. it's it's a movie that isn't mindless. They want you to think that it's mindless, but if you can shut your brain off and not think about it, it's when it really shocks you and kind of like wakes you up from that trance that you realize that the movie is good. Huh. That's how it yeah. is for me. You ha- It has to throw you off. Mm-hmm. This is, this is crazy. Yeah, that 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 that. Wow, that you hit me with some deeper. Uh, yeah, did I did yeah, I just make a? You made my mind explode a little bit. Yeah, for for B movies. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, dang, go. okay, for okay, okay. That's okay. how you that's how you tackle it. That's right. That's right. That's crazy. Um. Okay, so the director is Dustin Ferguson, who did Amityville, Evil Never Dies, and the upcoming, this is the name of it, this is the name of the movie, direct-to-video, straight-to-video horror of the 90s. That's literally the name of the movie. That's the movie? That's the name of the movie, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, I guess they got the right guy. (laughs) Sounds sounds about right. Yeah, he announced, today I direct the first attack scene for the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes reboot. This has been a long time coming, and I couldn't be more honored. Okay, here's the thing. As a director myself, I know that everyone has different tastes, Mm -hmm. but for me, and I'm saying this for me subjectively, I couldn't intentionally direct a bad movie. I I, I just don't... I can do like a genre film, like something like a Death Proof or a Planet Terror, but I feel like I still have to make it good, right? Like, Like there are people who really like to make these like Zombiever and like intentionally bad films like people make their living off of it and maybe that's why they like it because they make their living off of it yeah there's a there's a market for it there's a for market sure. for it but uh for me personally I just I I want to str- mm, I don't want to say I want to strive for something greater and just imply that what they're doing isn't great but no. I want to strive to to make more quality content you know and maybe that's what their their dream is too but like maybe they also want to be you know they want yeah. to be comf- comfortable that's true that's true or maybe they just really love exploitation b movies that's what they grew up with and that's kind I mean, that's of what their, that's, that's that's their taste too, yeah that's their taste you know yeah uh attack of the killer tomatoes dude and maybe we'll get a remake of its three sequels yes there are three sequels return of the killer tomatoes okay in 1988 and then killer tomatoes strike back in 1990 and then my favorite one of all from 1991, Killer Tomatoes Eat France. That's a great name. That is a great that, name. I'd like to see that movie. Yeah, I mean, it has the best... Oh, dude, if, if they're just eating countries and stuff like that. Dude, I wonder if it's like a Katamari thing. You ever play that game? No. Where you start off as a little ball, and you just keep, like, rolling. Oh, I've heard stuff. of that. Yeah, 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 and then you just you become huge, and you just start rolling over, like, uh, cityscapes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, dude. Okay, now I'm in. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. in. <laughs> I'm in. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um, now I gotta watch these these old ones. We should do that too. Let's watch Attack of the Killer Tomatoes on Add the podcast. Add that to the list. Add that to the list. Let's do it. We should do like you know. Oh, dude, you know what we should do? Just right now, it just hit me. Mm-hmm. We should do because I know we've been talking about doing actual like live watches and like commentary watches. We should do like a different theme each month, like a B movie month, Golden Age month, something like that, dude. The, some of those are going to be really hard to do because you, cause you got some some of those movies obviously some of them are copywritten maybe n- but I mean like some of those are hard to do in like in like talk through it that's true like, are we are we, talk, are we thinking like movies that we haven't seen or we have seen so we're not like either or probably mm-hmm. I mean most likely that's why I like the idea of doing more B movies B movies because I don't because feel like I have to pay attention exactly, to it exactly. sounds terrible exactly but we'll do like a sci-fi month maybe like something like that and I mean, you have like 150 sci-fi movies. I have, yeah. So, thank you, Jesse, for for all the the 50. For he got it at a flea market for like a dollar. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, just 50 shitty sci-fi movies. I love. Oh them. my gosh, dude. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, I'm actually gonna pause this because I need to go to the bathroom, mm-hmm. and then we'll continue. I'm back. We're back. We're back. Okay, your boy need to take a Dookie Hauser, but I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna 
I'm gonna hold that puppy in that. I'm gonna hold that hush puppy inside. Sorry, that that got graphic. Unbelievable. <laughs> So, for the next bit of news, it sounds like what you said, that rumor, is accurate. It is kind of accurate. It's kind of accurate. It's kind of accurate. Uh, There are two Halloween movies being made back-to-back. Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. However, they decided to not do the uh, same month thing. Because they, they listen to us and they're like, oh, dude, that's right. How are we going to do the train? Yeah, they're like, <laughs> that's exactly it. They're like... What? Like, oh, wait, how can we do two movies at once? Oh! We can't! Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but Halloween Kills comes out, and again, this is why we need someone who freaking looks this shit up. Uh, Halloween Kills. We can barely afford our own our own people. I know, for real. Halloween Kills, October 16th, 2020, and then Halloween ends October 15th, 2021. So... It's uh, back-to-back sequels one year after another. Yeah, so they're just going to film them both and then just wait an entire year. Pretty much. Uh, Boring. Well, that kind of removes the stakes for Halloween Kills immediately because they're making a Halloween end. So you know that Michael Myers is going to make it for Halloween Kills. And then Halloween ends, it's like, well... I mean... Maybe. Is it... I mean, can the same thing be said about Infinity War? Eh, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. You know, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that, though, because I was watching an interview with uh, Marcus and McFeely, who wrote Infinity War and Endgame mm-hmm. with the Russo brothers or whatever, and they said, uh, someone brought that up, that they were at a Q&A, and they were like, like, how do you maintain these stakes And like when we already know that people like Spider-Man and Black Panther have a sequel coming out, it's already been announced, and he's like... He had a really good response, and he's like, look, our priority is creating an experience similar to what we had when we were kids and we watched Empire Strikes Back. You know, we, eight-year-olds don't don't read variety, is what he said. He's like, eight-year-olds eight year don't read the, the Hollywood Reporter. Gotcha. And I was like, that's a good, it's a good-ass statement right that there. That is a real good one. Because it's like, yeah, you're right, like, we ruin it for ourselves, basically, is what we do. Like people, yeah. So, I like that. I really like that 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 statement. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to Machete Kills. Uh, no, <laughs> that's the first thing I thought of when when freaking Halloween Kills. kills I'm like, co- yep. I'm like Machete Kills. Is the next one Halloween Kills again in space? <laughs> like, oh boy. Yeah, Jason X. Jason X. Oh my God! It's a freaking uh, Halloween. Michael Myers goes up to space, meets Jason X. Oh my gosh, dude. I'd buy I'd buy the ticket to that. Yeah. Directed by a guy who did the attack of Killer Tomatoes reboot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, uh Jamie Lee Curtis is set to reprise her role mm-hmm. as Laurie Strode, and um this is going to be the definitive trilogy, apparently, of Halloween films. Oh boy. Which is interesting because the first one was a sequel to the real first one, so it's not really a trilogy, it's a quadrilogy. And then you think of the titles and it's Halloween, Halloween. Halloween and kills Halloween ends. I think personally... That's confusing. Yeah. I think personally, I think a cooler title would have been like The Last Halloween. You know what I, You know what would have been cool? Halloween Night for the, the second one and mm-hmm. for the third one, The Last Halloween. Or how... Yeah, I think that would have been... I, I personally hmm. thought that probably would have been better. Hmm. You know? If okay. I, if, if I always had to pick the titles... I think Halloween Night and then Hall- the last Halloween, I think, would have been, would have been okay. cool. Because they're obviously going for that effect by Halloween Ends. It's like, yeah, that, yeah, okay, you're, is it really going to end, though? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. Probably does, won't. Does it ever? It's Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Yeah. Okay. No, but, like, it. Uh, th- I feel like they're done with that whole, let's make seven of this. Uh, yeah, that's true. I think true. They're, they're done with that. Yeah, you're right. I think... Now, when something says, like, Halloween ends, I feel like now people are more interested in a definitive end to series now, you know? Like, everyone's like, oh, Logan's not going to be the last Wolverine. It's like, no, yeah, it is. It it is. See, Halloween 5 kind of felt like that was going to be the the end of it. Yeah. Until they started making a bunch more. And, uh... It was it was interesting the way that they they ended it though because if you remember there, there was that that entity that like broke 
Michael out of jail yes. or whatever. And I'm like, yes, yes. who the fuck is that? Yeah. Did they ever explain that? They did in Halloween 6, which was known, which was Paul Rudd's first movie, by the way. I saw the ending of that. I never finished the movie. Freaking horrible. They turned him into, like, this spiritual, like, demon that, like, the cult, this cult brought to life. And it was freaking ridiculous. Speaking of this, oh, this just totally reminded me, because Donald Pleasance plays, you know, um... Oh my god, Loomis in yeah. the Halloween movies. He also plays Blofeld. I talked to Mitch about the Blofeld thing. And oh, it, oh. it wasn't him. It wasn't him who what? said that to me. It wasn't him? It wasn't him. I can't remember who it was, but somebody said that. And he's like, Blofeld. He's like, I don't even know who that is. And I'm like, that wasn't you? He's like, nah, that wasn't me. So somebody told me something about Blofeld that was really... Oh, dude, you gotta rack your brain now. I know, I, I, I can't remember who what, it was what, wasn't brendan no it wasn't brendan because brendan would have appreciated that like he would he appreciates films just in general uh -huh. um i can't remember it wasn't david it wasn't nick because nick doesn't know much about movies oh, that's dude. the perfect reason to have somebody say that though yeah but i know it wasn't <laughs> nick i know it wasn't nick i don't even think nick's ever seen a james bond movie uh who freaking I I could have sworn Maybe, it was Mitch. Well, we'll but it wasn't. make this your homework for the week. Yeah, we'll make this my my homework. Um, who else do I know that really dude, loves? Dude, movies? twist. It was me. <laughs> no way. No, it wasn't you. You 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 you're not the guy who would say that. Okay, so Halloween ends and sorry, Halloween kills and Halloween ends. I mean. Cool. They're just movies. They're movies. They're, yeah. They're, I, I mean, got, but they, I it, love it became Halloween. something that could have been like, huh, interesting. How is this going to work? And I, now it just became, oh, this is just like every other movie. I would have been much more excited for these sequels <coughs> if the first one, quote unquote, wasn't mediocre to me. Yes. You know? Yes. If, if, and David Gordon Green, because he is coming back to direct these two movies. I don't know if Danny McBride is coming back. I, I really don't know. Maybe, I'm going to just click this link and see if they mention it. But if that first one really nailed it for me, because I was excited for that film. I don't I know if you remember. You were, I remember you were. I was really excited for that film because I love Michael Myers. I love Halloween. I think, didn't I put Halloween as my you did. second number, like favorite horror number, film of all time? You're number one. And then, oh, number one. I know it was, I could, it was your number one because I was like, oh, I don't know what it is. Like, I literally, it was a movie that I ended up saying beforehand. Because I, I know we did a Halloween list. You're number and a horror list. Oh, separately. your number, your your it was your it was your Halloween list. Number, number one, one, and then number two for my horror list. Number one was Psycho for my yeah, obviously. Yeah, but yeah, I love Halloween, dude. So if that first one killed it, I would be so much more excited for this. But uh, I don't know, man. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like Danny McBride is coming back. Mm, that mm, that makes me a little nervous, man. Do you think that he's the reason that it... I don't know, man, because David Gordon Green has made some weird movies, but he's made some great movies like Stronger. I'd never seen it, but I heard it's really fantastic, and there's a lot of drama and heart and like just really heavy um, emotional stakes in that film. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, and this was Danny McBride's first dip into horror, and I it, that humor, I felt, was really awkward and was kind of one of the weaker parts of the film, and that really had Danny McBride's, you know, stamp of, like, stamp all over it. So, I don't know. Uh, hey, you want to see the announcement video they made? Uh, sure. Come over, we'll watch it live. Uh, watch it live. I'm going to put this down because it's going to echo. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, then. So, Halloween uh, kills and Halloween ends. What do you think? Same thing as I thought before. What did you think before? I can't remember. I already uh, forgot. Yeah, it was whatever. Yeah, yeah. I really feel like what they should have done is just do a, a one, um, just that that reboot sequel, that sequel reboot type thing they did. Mm -hmm. Reboot quill. Uh, that should have been the end of everything. They should just did one last hurrah and boom, killed it there. So now technically we got like four movies in the real canonized uh, yeah. series. So 
<laughs> oh. Hit him with the snooze. You hit him with the snooze. But again, I'm s- still looking forward to it, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Brendan, who is a huge, huge, he's a bigger Halloween fan than me, I sent him that announcement video, and I'm like, what do you think? And he's like, I'm super excited. I just hope they nail it this time. So. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. All right, my buddies. Uh, let's go on to the next beats and nails here. Yes. Yes! It has happened! Pop the, t- pop the champagne. Pop the champagne. No, it doesn't do the pop no, anymore. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't do the snap. It doesn't, it doesn't. That would have been perfect, dude. Why did I save it? I know, pop right? Pop the champagne. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, that would have been so good. Oh, man. Um, pop the champagne because literally in the middle in the middle of their Hall H presentation, freaking Marvel, dude, Marvel it, must be on Oh, their, so on it uh, so it came in and they were like, guess what, we uh, have some news for you. They didn't even mention it because I don't think they knew. Because, oh, really? Yeah, because they were in the middle of their presentation and then freaking, because I think someone asked them the question, they're like, how does it feel to be so close to Avatar? And he's like, it feels good. Let me rephrase this. How does it feel to be, to, to beat, beat it? Avatar, baby, we beat it! We beat it! We, uh, I heard about it. Yeah, I heard about it last night. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right it, before the gym. Like, yeah. yeah, dude. Still very close. I was, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, look. It didn't beat her by much, so that probably tells me that anything that beats this is probably not going to beat it by much. No, yeah, because I think it was 2 point, it was like 2.98 billion for, uh, Avatar, and this is 2.9 8.9 or something billion, which is like just only a couple like extra thousand, you know, but it still beat it. And that's the, that, that's the point. We made this happen. We made this happen. We did. Remember when I, that call to action in the, on the podcast, like months ago, Yeah. I said, we need to beat Avatar. There you go. Paid they, off. They paid off. They, they, they listened and I am so happy. And it's just like, because Avatar, man, it's been number one for how many years? Uh, 11 years. You know what's crazy, though, about it? It's all international, dude. It's all international. Like, uh, domestically, Avatar has already been beaten twice. Did it? Yeah. Like, Star Wars Episode Seven beat Avatar, and so did Avengers Endgame. But I think Infinity War also beat it. I'm not sure. But um, it's just the international numbers for Avatar were so staggering. How many people outside of the U.S. saw that movie? It was crazy. And uh, that was the hard leap. That was the hard hurdle to leap over. Not even Star Wars Episode Seven can do it. But Avengers Endgame Again, did it, baby. Don't forget that the tickets were an upcharge. They were a huge upcharge. So yeah. the only, the next time that this is gonna, the next time something's gonna beat this is when like, you know, minimum minimum up. wage goes up. So therefore, ticket prices go up or whatever. Then we have a, additional technology that's gonna make give it an upcharge. We're gonna be paying forty dollars a ticket. Of course, it's gonna win. Yeah, yeah, that's thing. true. But it ain't gonna be Avatar two though because that hype died down already. Yeah. Unless they pull something like you pull a rabbit out of the hat and be like, oh, by the way. Not only is it in 3D, but we're bringing back smell vision But it's actually 4D. 4D. Uh, uh, and an avatar sits right next to you during the whole movie. Like, yeah, what right. The fuck? Or it's like, it's the first VR movie feature film. Oh my, see, that's what I'm actually thinking that he's he's about to do. He's probably That's why he wants disgusted. to wait. Yeah, He's right. to do some shit like that. He wants to do like where everyone in the audience puts on like a VR headset and they're like looking around. Like that, maybe. And then you can, like, so basically, like, you can see everyone that's in the theater, but also, like, behind them is, like, a, like a, f- a colorful forest or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That would be, uh, wow, that would be disorienting. But Also, it, that would be the death of movies. Right? Yeah, I would not like that. But I really think what they're really doing is James Cameron has talked about experimenting with uh, frame rates. Like, he really wants to go up in the frame rates, like 120 frames per second. You know, kind of like The Hobbit and Billy Lyndon's Long Halftime Walk. <laughs> kind of like uh, silent films, where there's like they walk really fast. No, 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 no. They, they, that's down in frame rates. Like, the, the, those films were in, like, 12 frames a second. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He wants to go 120 frames a second, so it's even extra smooth. You know, like, crazy smooth. Um... I saw The Hobbit in 48 frames per second in the theater, and it was weird. Did, was it like a special showing or something? Yeah, like it was that? a special showing. It was high frame rate HFR, and um, I went out of my way to watch an HFR screening of The Hobbit, and um, 
I remember walking out of that movie and I go to the bathroom afterwards and there was some dudes in the movie and uh, they were in the urinals and they're like, so what'd you think of the movie? They're like, it was pretty good, but wasn't like, wasn't like the image like weird like something was weird about the image and he's like i know like the, the image just looks so like weird like they couldn't explain it you know because it was so weird to them and but you know what it was I because th- of the high frame rate because I, I saw the movie too i think uh i think if i remember correctly there's something about that movie and this is this probably is, is why i thought that it just feels more fake and i think yeah. that's the whole that's not the point of like Making fantasy stuff like that, you want to you want to trick them into thinking this is like as real as it can be. Yeah, and also though, have you ever seen the behind the scenes video of Peter Jackson making The Hobbit? No. I need to show you that video because you will feel bad for him, dude. That film was so rushed that they couldn't spend any time on anything, dude. Like they the anyone from the costume department to the second unit director uh, team, to the visual effects department, they had almost no time to finish everything. I remember some guy made a joke. He's like, at the premiere, he's like, I guarantee you right now someone has a flash drive and they're making last minute changes up there right now to the edit. Like, that's how crazy it was because the film was in development with Guillermo del Toro for years. Mm -hmm. He left, Peter Jackson came on. Peter Jackson's like, I want to make my own movie. And they had, like, no time. And you saw Peter Jackson, like, that dude almost killed himself making those movies. Well, I, uh, the one person I do feel bad for about that, I, had, I don't know anything about that, but I, mm-hmm. I feel bad for Ian McKellen, who had to oh, yeah. do that, because he, he broke down on set, because he didn't, he's like, this isn't acting. He, ha- he played, he, he, they filmed him separate from everybody else so he wasn't interacting with yeah. any of the people that was the first one though wasn't it that was the first lord of the rings where that happened uh i th- i uh, jake told me it was on the hobbit i th- believe it was the i'll look this up but i believe it was actually the first one and then he got used to it after that because mm. i mean that dude's in nothing but special effects films pretty much like the dude's magneto yeah and shit. but that doesn't mean you can't have the actors in the scene with you right right ian mckellen or at least on set would be nice yeah yeah We'll talk about Ian McKellen, by the way, later. Oh, yeah. But, uh... See what I mean, see what I mean when I make weird? Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, you're right. You're right. Dude, never, never doubt Jacob. Nope, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, you're right. Yeah, he was, uh... I mean, that's what they had to he, do. He though. knows a lot about that stuff. Mm-hmm. He loves fantasy. Mm-hmm. He li- like reads fantasy like crazy. He loves Lord of the Rings. It's his yeah. favorite movies. Yeah, for sure. No, I um, yeah, but I I just feel bad for everyone on that uh, film, dude. Like all those Hobbit films, like it was crazy. I don't know why they just didn't. The stu- I, I blame the studio because they're like, nope, we got a deadline. We have a release date. You have to make it. It's like, why not just extend it, dude? Like, give this guy a break. Like you see Peter Jackson. He, like, you see him on set, like, he's on the set of The Hobbit, and he's just breaking down, like, he's just sleeping, because he's just so exhausted. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's unlikely that they ever do stuff like that, it's extending projects like no, that. No, no, they'll never do it. But people have left projects because of refusals to make deadlines. Uh, I remember uh, Sam Raimi, that's one of the main reasons he left Spider-Man 4, was because he's like... He didn't like Spider-Man 3, and he's like, I want to make this last one worth it. I want to make it good. He's like, but I need more time. And then Sony's like, nope, you have a deadline, you have to make it. And he's like, well, I'm leaving. He's like, I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. So, people, it's crazy. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. But, uh, you know what's great, though? It's the fact that Endgame beat Avatar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back on that. Back on I that. For, I almost forgot where we were. I had to, like, look at that. Yeah, yeah. No, Endgame beat Avatar, and it is exciting and let's get into the most exciting news baby i'm hyped Mm -hmm. i'm hyped marvel's hall h presentation at comic-con happened yesterday tico yes happened yesterday where they announced a slew of new things well not new things yeah kind of stuff that's already been confirmed but new details about these yep have been uh have been revealed so that's kind of interesting so yesterday they went to hall h and they uh <clears throat> Excuse me. They they presented Phase Four, which is their newest uh, phase after the Infinity Saga. So the Infinity Saga is over. It's wrapped. This is the newest phase. They're going to start a whole new thing. So let's just talk about the phase as a whole here. I don't know how much you know about it. 
Uh, I know some stuff. Uh, this is the first phase to include television shows. Yes, that's so. So yeah, my my friend texted me, confirmed. You need Disney Plus to to stay uh, with the can to know to be caught up on everything. And not only that, though, uh, I guess I'll just jump ahead here. That is confirmed, though, basically because they said that WandaVision ties directly into, into Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange. too. So you're right, and I don't know how I feel he, about he that. He also texted me about those specific things. Because he said... I mean, we're, we're going to go movie by movie yeah, here, yeah. but but I just, like, as a whole, like, the phase, like, that's huge. Like, that te- these television shows are going to be part, but that's kind of nerve-wracking to me because, first of all, that's a lot of content. I, 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 I still stand... And I love it. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, to support it and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I'm glad to, like, check it out, but mm-hmm. it's also frustrating that that's such a cheap way to get everybody to, to yeah, get on to board get, to with get this Disney streaming Plus. service. I, you're right. It kind of feels like a corporate move. Definitely. And, and, you know, Marvel's kind of always been above the whole corporate move thing because, I don't know, I just feel like they have, you know? they Well, the thing is, they'll get their money regardless. They'll get their money regardless, and yeah. And you need to, do you really need to do this too? Yeah, and for me personally, I'm not upset about me because I'm going to get Disney Plus no matter what just because of the Star Wars shows and the... Marvel shows and everything. I was always going to get it. But my thing is, I'm nervous for the average moviegoer. I'm nervous for them because not everyone's going to have Disney+. Plus. So are they going to be confused as hell in Doctor Strange 2 because they didn't watch WandaVision? Like, that's going to be very... Con- like, mm, I don't know. Word, word of mouth, something tells me people... Everyone has that friend that just know that keeps up on knows. that shit. That's and then true. they'll be like, oh yeah, dude, you guys you guys gotta mm. check this shit out. Here, I'll give you my password. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that that's true. And I feel like the diehard... Because you get the people who watch every other Marvel movie and they're just more casual. But then you get the people like us who are like, no, we watch every single one so we can maintain the storyline. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, like, I remember I was talking to my friend Nick and he was like, he watched Endgame like way late. Like it was like a week before it left theaters and he finally watched it. And he's like, you know when Captain America lifted the Mjolnir? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I don't get why that moment was special. Like, I don't, I don't get it. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't get it? He's like, I just don't get it. Yeah, I see Avengers 2. Yeah, he hasn't seen Avengers 2. He hasn't seen these movies. So he's very casual. So there are all these people who just kind of watch them. They turn their brain off. They don't understand the complexity of the story. So maybe they won't even care. You know, I, so, so for some bits like that, I don't even think it's complexity. I just think it's like if you have the memory for it. If you haven't seen those movies since they came out, sometimes you, you'd forget that too. Yeah, that but I mean, because it was just a one-off scene that really didn't matter. Yeah, but I don't really even watch. I mean, but they always stressed the importance of Mjolnir. He's a, it, Mjolnir is like Excalibur. You yeah. know, only the worthy can pull it out of the stone or hold yeah. it. You know, so it's. I think it's a you know, and that's like all the Thor movies. They've established that. That not anyone can lift it if they're not worthy, mm-hmm. you know. So there's a lot of movies, and not just Avengers two, that establishes it, you know. I think just establishing the hammer in and of itself is. I, I think yeah, but I'm I'm saying like I think that specific scene oh, yeah, shows yeah. that not not everyone there can. Yeah, because even it. he is like I knew it, you know. Yeah. So I I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. But um. But yeah. So let me just uh, double check this right now because I just want. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's a little, I'm a little apprehensive about the TV shows being, like, actually part of the phase. Mm -hmm. Like, it's part of it. Like, phase four includes the TV shows. Yeah, it's gonna show them, uh, those, those on there, in, under phase four. Oh, yeah, did you see the, the thing right here? I did. Yeah, like, they're part of it. Yeah. And that's the, 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 the I like how they broke down, like, everything that was in phase four, and then they're like, oh, but actually we have something for phase five, too. It's like, whoa. whoa." Yeah, it's true, at the very end, we'll get into that. But, uh, but, but, bottom line is, though, I'm still excited. I'm still excited. I've been a lifelong comic fan. I love this stuff. But, a lot of this stuff... Is um, is like uh, kind of just confirming what we already knew, but there's additional information being shown like about these movies, which yeah. we'll get into that. Do you just want to go by release date here? I, I'm guessing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So this year off thing uh, probably didn't pan out because on May first, 2020, we have Black Widow. Now Black Widow uh, is being directed by uh, Kate Shortland, and obviously stars uh, Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, Ot. Fagbendel, that's his name, and Rachel Wise, and uh, David Harbour. Hey, David Harbour, yeah. Yes, David Harbour is playing, and this is some of the newest stuff that comes out, David Harbour is playing the Red Guardian, 
who, if you know anything about the Red Guardian, he's basically uh, the Captain America of Russia. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's a good guy? He is a good guy in the comic books. He's kind of like, I think he's a good guy, yeah. And then the main villain of this movie, yes, I am so excited, Taskmaster. He's confirmed, baby. I don't know who that you is. You don't know who that is. No. Okay. Taskmaster has been one of the most requested villains for a long-ass time in the Marvel world. Uh -huh. He's a villain. His name is Tony Masters. He can basically, anything he views, any fighting style he sees, he can absorb it completely like into his memory, and he, he memorizes it instantly. So if he fights Spider-Man, he immediately knows what fighting style to take on because he knows the fighting style of Spider-Man. And he knows his like specific moves and stuff he like that? He knows his specific moves and he signatures. can emulate them. He can't emulate the powers, but he can emulate the moves. Same thing with Captain America. Like He knows how to fight exactly like Captain America. He even has his own shield and everything. Okay. So it's crazy. And he also has a really cool design. He's got like a skull face and like a hood. It's really cool. They did show some footage of uh, Black Widow at Hall H, and they said it was really cool, very gritty. They said it's going to harken back to, like, Winter Soldier-style fighting. Okay. Um, and they said it showed Scarlett Johansson fighting Taskmaster, and it was awesome. It also so showed uh, Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, going head-to-head -head with Florence Pugh, who plays y Yolanda Bevola, who, if you know anything about the comics, is actually the second Black Widow. <laughs> She's, okay. Yeah, so it looks like it might be a passing of the torch thing. Okay. Because this is a prequel, I should, yep, yep. I should mention. Yep. And um, it might be a passing of the torch uh, kind of going on because Yelena Bovella, whatever her name is, uh, she's the second Black Widow in the comic books. She takes over the mantle. So I think that's kind of what's going to happen here. Florence Pugh. Okay, then. There's a lot of mantle passing happening in uh, Phase 4, it that looks like. That scares me. Yeah, but, I mean, they have to do it. That though. scares me. They have to do it. We'll get to more... Okay, uh, as long as as long as they're doing it with like one character that we know like is like I don't want the same like another origin story for each character like the same origin story. Yeah. So as long as they're not doing that, I'm fine with it. Yeah, that's true. They might get lazy down the road though. No, I, I mean I don't know. You're such a cynic, man. I don't know. I don't know. You're not, just... not even everyone is perfect. Not even Marvel. Yeah, that's true. But they've been killing it so far. Sure, sure, and uh, sure. you're such a cynic, man. You're such a cynic. I'm sorry to bring down the house. Oh, you always bring down the house. I'm like, oh, isn't this cool? Yeah, but it's a cash grab. I mean, like, the, the Toy Story 4 is great, but it was a total cash grab. I mean, that, it literally <laughs> could... I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's like, why can't you just enjoy the movie? I do enjoy the movie. But you always I, gave it, I gave it a high nine. Yeah, still, still. Um, right, Let's go to the fall 2020 here. Uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Disney+. Plus. Streaming service. They also show some footage of this. Um, apparently, Daniel Brühl is coming back as Baron Zemo, and not only that, but they showed him putting on the mask, baby. The Baron Zemo mask. If you know anything about the comics, which you don't, Baron Zemo has a classic purple mask that he always wears. He didn't wear it in Civil War, but he's wearing <laughs> it in this show, and I'm freaking excited, dude. If I hear... If you know anything about the comics, one more time! <laughs> oh, you're gonna hear it a lot. Oh, boy. Because you don't know jack shit. I know. I don't know jack shit. But, uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I like him as a villain. Yeah, yeah. He was one of the most underrated villains of Civil War, so it's cool I mean, to yeah, because he was kind of... He wasn't in the spotlight, which is kind of, like, his point. And so he, I thought that yeah. was good. And he won in the end. Yes. He won in the end. Yes. So it's going to be interesting what happens to him after the snap. Did he die? Did he come back? Who knows? What has he been planning? He obviously escaped after that, right? I mean, what if all the guards faded away? He didn't. He could have escaped. That's true. You know? What's really cool about this Disney Plus streaming service, though, I will say, is that it looks like they're putting money into these shows. I mean, we got Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan coming back, dude. And yeah. Daniel Brühl coming back. This is, this is real. This is real shit. This is part of Phase 4. This ain't Daredevil, as much as I love Daredevil and The Punisher and Jessica Jones and all that, those shows are cheap. They're pretty cheap. They, they're they very cheap. Their fight choreography is good, but everything else is not... That's to compensate. Yeah, exactly. Um, everything else is pretty cheap looking. This is not going to be cheap. I can already tell. Yeah. Because this is this is their brand. You know? They don't even talk about... They don't even talk about things like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know what I mean? They don't talk about that. They act like it doesn't exist. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, because it doesn't exist to them. I mean, exactly. So these are the first really kind of officially canon TV shows that we know of. Even though I like to picture all this stuff canon, there's something which we'll get into later at the very end that really calls into question. It, 
not even that. It pretty much confirms that the Netflix series aren't canon. You okay. Know, which we'll get into. I wish I do- actually have no clue what you're talking about. Really? So this will be interesting. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Okay. Well, Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, comes out fall 2020. After that, uh, this is like the first Phase 4 movie ever announced. November 6, 2020, Eternals. So what I'm a little disappointed in is Keanu Reeves was supposed to be in this cast. Turns out he's not. He's not? He's not because they didn't announce it. They brought out the entire cast on stage, which includes Angelina Jolie, yep. uh, Richard Madden, mm-hmm. Kum- Kumal Nanjiani, mm-hmm. Lauren Ridolph, Brian Tyree Henry, mm-hmm. Salma Hayek, okay. Liam McHugh, and Don Lee, directed by Chloe Zhao, who directed uh, The Rider. Yeah. So that's pretty much um, that's pretty much almost everything we've uh, heard about the film. Uh, the only thing that's kind of new about this is they did release a plot synopsis, and the plot synopsis I don't have it like in front of me, in front of me. Do we really want to know? Uh, yes. You probably actually want to know. Yes. No, I, I have it right here. I have it right here. Hold on. Uh, the Eternals are a race of immortal aliens sent to Earth by the Celestials to protect humankind from the Deviants. Let me tell you something. That's a lot simpler of a storyline compared to the Eternals from the comics. The Eternals from the comics, dude, is like so confusing. Okay, well, that ex- okay, that's it. That's interesting because when I when people described it to me... I expected it to be like on another plane of exi- like another yeah. like plane of existence. That's kind I don't of know. that's kind of how it is in the comics. In the comics, what happens is the celestials come to Earth during like two thousand one, like man ape, you mm-hmm. know, time, and they take these apes and experiment on them, and then create this war, like this race of um, they create a bunch of different races of uh, immortal humans. They create the Eternals, which are like humans times 10 you know they, they live forever they got heightened strength and heightened agility whatever but then they have failed experiments like the humans which is just me and you who live on earth and then they have like the crazy failures which are the deviants which are basically like these disgusting morphing creatures you know mm-hmm. who uh were failed experiments and it goes very much crazier and crazier from there it really looks like they're pulling a captain marvel and just simplifying everything yeah, and that's kind of not a great thing for me because when I heard this, uh, I heard about this, like my mm-hmm. imagination was running rampant. And yeah. Now it's kind of like, okay. It's a- well, The Eternals is like Jack Kirby's baby, apparently. Like, this was Jack, one of Jack Kirby's only times where he wrote and drew every everything. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this was his baby here because um, usually he was uh, partnered with Stan Lee. This is 100% Jack Kirby, was Eternals. And, um,. I hope they keep that Jack Kirby aesthetic. They they paid tribute to it in Thor Ragnarok, and this is 100% Kirby, so I'm hoping they keep that. Um, here's the thing I, I want to ask you about, because one of the concerns I've had about the MCU is the same concern I have about comic books, is that eventually you get to the point where the continuity gets so big and so vast, it eventually falls in to itself. It eventually collapses under its own weight. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. When you describe this movie, so we got we got like shapeshifters and shit like that. Yeah, now. yeah, basically. It's starting to feel like Men in Black. Yeah, we're just like everything is like a front for something else. That's true. That's a good way to put it. That is a good way to put it. Because when you go back to the first Iron Man, it was almost the world we lived in now. Yeah. Now. It's just retcon after retcon. Oh no, this was always in the timeline. We've always had Eternals. We've always had aliens on Earth who are immortal protecting us. We've always had Captain Marvel. You know, always had this. And now, and then now that's kind of complicated. Complicating even the older movies. I guess I feel uh, like I feel like now they've earned it though because they've built it up so slowly. You know, sure, sure. They've built it up over like ten years. They've built all this up, so I feel like they have the right, I guess you could say, to, to, to do these retcons. I, I'm just hoping that it, the retcons don't collapse, in, like, the whole MCU, you know? Yeah, but it's it's really going to uh, diminish the value of, like, certain heroes and stuff like that when, you, when it feels like half of, like, planet Earth is filled with, like, some sort of, like, superior being and then you have like 50% of it is like human beings like that's what it's going right. to feel like at some point when you have so many of them right and, and that's what you get when you have kind of like earth as the hub yeah of the world yeah and I've, I, I heard that phase four really is going to dive into the more cosmic side of the Marvel Universe which I really want them to do 
I think now, I think it is time to just go cosmic and just go to different planets, you know? Yeah, and, which uh, is going to be a turn off to su- some people. To for some sure. people, yeah. But I feel like that's a turn on for a lot of people too, because a lot of people love Guardians and Thor and stuff like that. I mean, the MCU has has earned that right to to be that crazy. And uh, uh, yeah, I'd say so. And I'm looking forward to the Eternals. Um, I mean, the cast is absolutely amazing, and it's really cool to see, um, you know, Richard Madden who is playing Icarus and uh, freaking uh, Sama Hayek who I think is playing Cersei, mm. which is pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, trust me, by the time this year hiatus is over, I will be excited, but right now Uh I'm kind of like, huh, another another cosmic going to Earth thing, another fish out of water type thing. That's what it feels like. I'm sorry, I'm allergic to cynics, so I'm going to... I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You never say anything about that when I like shit on like movies you don't care about. But then when you start shit, when I start shitting on Marvel movies, you're that's like, right. You're like, no, no, no. I don't want to hear this. Just because it's true. La 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 la. Because la. Marvel movies are awesome, bitch. Um. Yeah. So anyway, that's 2020 for you. Mm-hmm. Let's go into February 12, 2021. Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, baby. Now, you know what that means, Legend of the Ten Rings? No. That means they're bringing back the Ten Rings from Iron Man 1. Oh. You know, remember that ten, that terrorist organization? And uh, they cast oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Remember how they kind of royally effed up the Mandarin in uh, Iron Man 3? Oh, n- yeah? Not anymore. They is casted it? the real Mandarin, baby. Oh, wow. Tony Leung is the real Mandarin in Shang-Chi, and he runs the Ten Rings. So they Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Now so, they're fixing their mistakes from earlier. Cool. Exactly. Thank, now, this is a retcon I like, because that pissed me off in Iron Man 3. I'm a little upset that we can't see the real Mandarin fight Tony Stark, because that's kind of like... You know, what, you know what that's like? That's like uh, Batman going through his series of films, and he never fights the Joker, and then uh, Nightwing has his own seri- series of films, and then he fights the Joker. I'd be like, yeah, that's cool, but I wish I could have seen Joker fight Batman. That's kind of like the way I feel about it. But that's really cool how they're they're fixing that little mistake they made in Iron Man 3. Now, the real Mandarin is out there. Tony Leung plays him, and that's awesome, dude. That's cool. Also, Aquafina is in the movie, so that's pretty cool. And Simu Liu, Simu Liu is uh, our Shang-Chi. Yes. So that's pretty awesome. I didn't recognize anything that he was in. I didn't recognize him either. I think he's a relatively unknown. Which is totally fine. He was on stage and they said they literally casted him two days ago. They said they casted him two days ago and then they flew him out to, to be in Comic-Con in front of all these people and they be like, I'm have, Shang-Chi. Must have really impressed him. Yeah. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Dude, That I'm. this is one of the most uh, films I'm excited about. This one right here. Yeah. I just think that's that's really cool territory where you can explore new things. And martial, they, arts and martial arts films and maybe pay tribute to old martial arts films and Bruce Lee films, which they sort of try to do in Iron Fist and royally screwed it up. So mm-hmm. Shang-Chi is literally the next best thing. And I, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Yeah, that one is uh, pretty exciting. That one is exciting. Let's go to another Disney Plus show. Uh, Spring 2021 WandaVision. We've talked about this before. Here's the crazy part about WandaVision, though. Uh, WandaVision is crazy because, let me just pull this up here, Kevin Feige said it's going to be one of the weirdest aspects of Phase 4. He said it's just going to be weird, is what he said. And that's interesting. And it stars Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, obviously, and Tayona Paris, who plays Monica Rambeau, who is the little girl from Captain Marvel. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, so she's going to be in WandaVision. Oh, sweet. And if you know anything about the comics... Uh, she becomes Photon. She becomes Photon. Which you've mentioned before, I think. Yes, yes I have. Yes. So she becomes Photon, and she's a really cool hero, and, uh, yeah, it's really cool to see her debut. But that's another thing, though, we've talked about. It's like, what if she appears in a movie, right? Mm -hmm. People are gonna be like, who is this chick now? You know, if they haven't watched WandaVision. Yep, that's, that is a concern. You know, so I hope that they, uh kind of keep everything at least somewhat consistent for the layman's, but I feel like if you're not on board with the MCU at this point, I mean, why even try to cater to anybody? You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Yeah. Sorry. So WandaVision, I'm excited. Apparently it leads directly into our next film, May 7th, 2021, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now this one I have a question about. What is it? Go ahead. Uh, my friend texted me. I don't know if he's referring to WandaVision because it was a confusing text or if he's talking about this movie, but he said it's going to be a full-on horror. It's full-on horror. Is what what the fuck, bro? Yeah. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, I know, right? Scott Derrickson, who, you know, he's... He's known for Sinister and stuff. He came out and said he's going to make the first scary MCU film. And you know what I think they're going to do? First of all, and Kevin Feige said this on stage, he said, even though Quentin Beck lied about the multiverse, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You all right there? I didn't fuck up the cord, did I? No, you're good. You're good. He's like, just because uh, Quentin Beck lied about the multiverse doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It does exist. And we're going to explore that in the multiverse of madness. And you know what that title, I, I feel like that title is referring to what's that in Do- the doctor strange comics there's something called the nightmare dimension and it's run by a villain named nightmare who is very scary and he's one of the bi- bigger doctor strange villains you know mm-hmm. and i have a feeling if scott derrickson wants to go full horror with this i definitely feel like that's where they're going to go they're going to go to that nightmare dimension you know mm-hmm. and that brings in a lot of things you're bringing in the multiverse here like, that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. That just changes everything. So that means there are different versions within the same continuity, which we'll get into later with a different show. But holy crap. Like this There's is a like, lot going on in Phase 4. There is. There is. Which is weird because you look at the amount of movies, it's only six movies. So that's like Phase 1. There were only six movies. But there's also five television shows. You know? So five, six movies, five television shows, you don't think it's that much when you separate the two, but... When they're all combined, that's really what adds I it up. I think what's interesting, too, is, like, how condensed they are. Yeah. It seems like we're getting all of that stuff within, like, a six-month period. So. Yeah, dude. Freaking Winter, uh, what is it, Falcon and the Winter Soldier comes out almost the exact same time as the Eternals, it looks like. Because it says Falcon Winter Soldier comes out fall 2020, and then November 6, 2020 is Eternals. So, I mean, that's fall, you know. Yeah. So, that's, that's, that's crazy. In the Multiverse of Madness, though... Of course, Benedict Cumberbatch returns, and also joining him is, here's a crazy reveal, is Elizabeth Olsen. Scarlet Witch is in it, mm-hmm. you know? So, which kind of makes sense, because in the comics, she's like a sorcerer as well. I really want them to explore more of her powers than just, I can lift things and Yeah, smash shoot them beams down and, and stuff. And shoot beams and stuff. No, in the comics, she can, like, warp reality. Like, she is very powerful. Yeah. You know, she's like a sorcerer. But unless you don't, if you don't have a Doctor Strange or some of the, somebody like that to show you, how exactly. you going to know? Exactly. That's why I'm excited, dude. And I really like it when, I kind of like these semi-team-up movies, like how Hulk was in Thor Ragnarok and stuff. I, I, I like those, you know? Yeah. So it's really cool. It's going to be cool to see um, Scarlet Witch with Doctor Strange. And this one I'm really looking forward to. A full-on horror MCU film. Fucking, I'm down. I'm down, homie. I'm down. All right, spring 2021, we got Loki. This is probably the least one I'm excited about. Um, it also has the weirdest logo. Did you see the Loki logo? I did. Isn't it weird? I mean, I get what they're doing. They're trying to show, like, oh, he's unpredictable, and he's the mischievous, and... <laughs> oh, the trickster. And he's the trickster, so, you know, you don't know where... He is. Apparently, it's going to explore um, Loki both before and after Endgame. So, does that mean, oh. like... Does that mean he's... Like, that, when he took... Is that the, a, con, a, a conf, confirmation or something? I think so. I think when he took the Space Stone in that timeline, he created a branch reality. And that's what it's going to explore. So now we... That's a multiverse. So we have a multiverse now. Because of Loki, pretty much. Yeah, and of course they have to have the movie that explains multiverses come out before they, they yep. do that. Yep, which yeah, is you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give them that, that. They're smart about that. They are. They're usually smart about keeping things consistent. My only thing is, the reason I'm not excited about Loki is because I feel like that character is a little... Is overrated the right word? I don't want to say overrated, but I feel like he's done. He's done. I mean... His, his arc is over. I, yeah. felt, I felt like it should have been over. He died in Infinity War, and that's it. Now we got a new version of him. Granted, a, an evil version of him, a more evil version of him, so that's cool, but it's done. I agree with, with you. I, I think it should be done, but I don't necessarily think he's overrated. I think that he's one of the only villains. He's one of the only death. good villains. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll, I'll give you that. I love Loki. Don't get me wrong. He's not like Harley Quinn overrated. Overrated <laughs> might be the wrong word. I'm just saying, like, I feel like... Out of all these series, I'm a little... I'm just not excited about his series. I, I don't blame you. That's probably the thing I'm least excited about. It's like it's like when they made Solo after 
Harrison Ford's death, I'm like, or not Sarah, sorry, a freaking Han Solo's death. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was like, yeah, okay, I don't mind it, but it's like, his, it's done. Like, his arc is over. Like, why do we need to go back to it, you know? So that's kind of how I feel about feel about this. Mm. So not much to say about it. Let's go into summer 2021. Now, this one's insane. What if? Yes. The first animated series that takes place within the MCU. Yes. And Which is not canon, right? I mean, you can't really make something canon. like no, that no, no, canon. No, 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 no. no. It, it, see, the weird thing about the what if... Uh, in the comics, I told you about the what if comics. Yeah. It's basically you're right. It, that's literally what it is. It's just a what if. Like what if uh, Bruce Banner never became the Hulk? What if uh, what if Gwen Stacy didn't die? You know what if all this happened? Like what if um, you know what if uh, Captain America was born in Russia? All this crazy stuff. Gotcha. Um, so this is the first animated kind of series that takes place within the MCU, I guess, because it's it's canon, but it's not because the Watcher who is being voiced by Jeffrey Wright, which is dope. He's basically um, he's basically kind of just playing out all these different scenarios and these mul- multiverse kind of... Uh, all these different multiverse scenarios, you know? Yeah. And he, ba- he basically just shows you what would happen if this... It's like the Twilight Zone of exactly. Marvel. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Thank you. Thank you for simplifying it for yeah, me. No, too. I got you. You're the man. You're the man. Did you see the voice cast though? Did not. That was actually something I was gonna ask you about. Okay, hold on. I'm. I'm just gotta. I got. Are you ready for this? Because I'm just gonna. I need to look this up. You. See, I like how you stopped going from the. You stopped using the computer. You were using the computer to I was. like look stuff up. And I now was. you're just like, nope, phone time. Oh well. All right. Sorry. I'm going back to the computer here because it's actually much much easier. Let me see if. I... What if voice cast? <clears throat> yeah. Let's see how that's so Marvel. quick. So quick. It is so quick, isn't it? I love computers. I know, I know. They released the... La, 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 la. Come on, you stupid. La, 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 la. All right. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yeah. Michael B. Jordan, Sebastian Stan, Josh Brolin, Mark Ruffalo, Tom Hiddleston, Samuel L. Jackson, Chris Hemsworth, Haley Atwell, Chadwick Boseman, Karen Gillan, Jeremy Renner, uh, Michael Douglas, Paul Rudd, Dominic Cooper, Neil uh, Donahue, uh, Sean Gunn, Natalie Portman, Taika Waititi, Toby Jones, Diman Hansu, uh, Jeff Goldblum, Michael Rooker, and uh, yeah. Holy shit. Yes, sir. So, oh, and Chris Sullivan. So, yeah, dude. Okay. They're all coming back to basically reprise different versions of themselves. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's That just tells you right there how much money they're throwing at yeah, this stuff. Yeah, dude. If you can get... Like, the actual actors to play, like, cartoon versions of themselves, you know that this is serious. Like... Yeah, I'd half expected them to have, like, uh, like the fucking voice actors for, like, the new yeah. uh, Mar- Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which yeah, actually, it, it, you actually got it. We're actually playing it right is now. Is it good? Is it good? How is it? It's fun. It's fun? It's fun. Yeah, okay. Mindless. That's cool. Um, yeah. So, that's insane. I think this is going to be one of the most fun entries. Because I'm, I'm just curious. What if? It's going to be cool to see how these different scenarios play out. For sure. What if Ant-Man created Ultron? Watch him do that. I'll be so pissed. I'll be like, yeah, what if he did? Almost like he did in the comics. You know? Hmm. Um, yeah, sorry, my bad. There you go. But I'm excited. I'm excited for that it. Is, that is a pretty uh, interesting one. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, baby. All right. All right, that's after that. All right, let's go to the fall of 2021. Hawkeye television series. We saw this coming. It's going to introduce uh, Kate Bishop into the MCU. Kate Bishop is, again, this is another passing of the torch thing. She's, you know, he passes the torch on to her in the comic books to be kind of like the new Hawkeye. Who is that? Kate Bishop? Yeah. She's kind of like a rundown um, woman who was, it's, this is the comic. The comic kind of heavily implies that she was sexually assaulted in the park because she was ambushed by like three dudes in Central Park. And it's kind of implied that she was sexually assaulted. Mm Mm-hmm. But it doesn't, like, show it, and she never really talks about it. And then after that, she kind of goes on a quest to, um, I don't want to say get revenge, but she wants to help people because of what happened to her. She runs into Hawkeye. Hawkeye trains her in the way, because she's a young girl, trains her in the way of being a superhero, and then kind of passes the torch down to her, and then she uh, joins the Young Avengers. Kind of interesting that they didn't use her, his daughter. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. he even calls her Hawkeye. 
That's true. That's true. I kind of thought they were going to do that too, but I guess they wanted to go with the Kate Bishop story. Uh, Kate Bishop is a relatively newer character in the Marvel comics. I don't know much about her, but this kind of just adds to the whole thing of we're passing the torch for a lot of these characters. Yeah. I mean, we passed the torch to the Falcon for Captain America. Uh, they're passing the torch possibly to Black Widow, to a new Black Widow, and then they're passing the torch to Hawkeye. And uh, also, let's get into November 5th, 2021, which also kind of has something about passing of the torch for Love and Thunder. Yeah. Did you see that? Isn't that sick? I did. Isn't that sick? This it is total sick. Taika Waititi written all over it. Um, big reveals here. Uh, firstly, uh, let's just get into the biggest reveal probably. Natalie Portman is back. back. She's coming back as Jane Foster. AK, not just that. Not just that. She's coming back as Lady Thor. Who, I, you know, funny story. Actually, a lot of people are upset about this. Um, I'm a little not as upset as you might think I would be at this because I did read The Mighty Thor from Jason Aaron. Mm -hmm. I read that storyline where she becomes Thor back in 2015 when it first happened. I bought the comic and everything. And I liked the story. I liked the story of why she became Thor. My biggest concern is that storyline is actually pretty tragic. Like, Jane Foster, if you mind if I just tell you, like, why she becomes Thor in the comics. Sure, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, in the comics, she becomes Thor because she has cancer. So whenever, and she's, like, on the verge of dying, but she kind of gains the ability to wield Mjolnir, and whenever she has Mjolnir, her cancer goes away and she becomes Thor. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I don't think Taika Waititi has that, I don't know, he doesn't have that dramatic sensibility. You know what I mean? So I think she might become Thor just out of straight comedy, you know? I mean, yeah, that's kind of what I think too. I don't think they'd do that. Yeah, I, I just don't see that happening. Um, but I really wonder what they're going to do because Natalie Portman came on stage and everything like holding Mjolnir. I guess it's confusing because it seemed like for a while... She just didn't want to be a part of any of this. Yeah. Because she never showed up. Yeah, you 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 know why though? Because no. in Thor two they were gonna hire Patty Jenkins to do it, and then they didn't go with her. They went with someone else, and she didn't appreciate that. Apparently, this is all speculation, so I don't want to like further any rumors that aren't true. Mm. But apparently, uh, she didn't appreciate the fact that they hired a woman director, and then they she left or was fired or whatever, and then after that she had like a real bad taste in her mouth. I, I guess she's come around because she was in Endgame through reuse footage and she did some voiceover and now she's back completely. Yeah. She's back completely playing a female Thor, playing the female Thor. And that just makes me wonder what they're going to do with this, uh, with this character. Yeah. That's crazy. For sure. You know, that is absolutely crazy. So there's a part of me, I'm optimistic. Um, maybe because I have my Marvel goggles on, uh, but I can see why, you know, I hope it's not forced. That's just my biggest thing. I just hope it's not forced. Which doesn't really seem like it will be because Jane Foster is ingrained into the MCU already. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're just throwing a character into the MCU out of nowhere and saying, hey, fight the power, you know? Yeah. But, I, I feel, yeah, they are pulling her back in, kind of her importance back in. Yes. And I think that's good because that was a loose end. Yes. So I'm glad they're bringing her back. I love it when they tie up loose ends. So... That's it for Phase 4. Oh, wait a second. But there's something about Phase there's 5. There's something... Well, no, no, not only that, dude. Phase 4. Blade, baby. Blade! That's part of Phase 4, dude. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, oh okay, you had a different thing in mind. Oh. They did mention Phase 5. Oh, okay. But, no, Maybe Blade, I'm missing something. Yeah, Blade is part of Phase 4, baby. Okay. Oh! Dude, this was the big surprise. Because no one saw this coming. Nobody saw this coming. Because, you know, everything, like we said, everything was kind of just... Like, we knew this was happening. Like, Eternals and, you know, Shang-Chi and all that. That was already kind of announced. Blade, dude, freaking blew my mind. I'm like, no way. That is something that just completely came out of... Yes. And you know who's playing him, right? Yes! Mahershala the boy. Ali! The boy. Mahershala I Ali, dude. He's so love good. Love him, dude. He's so good. Here's the thing. This kind of proves that the Netflix series aren't canon. Because he was in... Luke That's Cage. what you were referring to. I'm yeah, like, what are you he was about? in Luke Cage as Cottonmouth, and gotcha. now and now he's Blade. It's kind of, and I know that they've done like a double casting, like in Civil War, the girl who plays Black Mariah in um in Luke Cage plays the mother of the son who died in Civil War. But that's a that's a minor character, 
Mm-hmm. And then people are like, oh, but the, the principal in Spider-Man Homecoming was one of the Ho- Howling Commandos, but he played his own grandson. That's why he, he casted. That's why he was casted. I wonder if they casted her in it just to be like, okay, to prove that it right. wasn't, and then they didn't get the memo, so they're like, okay, now we have to No, now we got to prove it. This kind of confirms to me that the Netflix series, no, they're not canon. Dude, you're right. Yeah. I feel like you're right. Yeah. And it's crazy, which sucks because I really... And that, that, that doesn't mean they won't use... Because they're bringing in the multiverse, too, don't forget. So maybe it's just a multiverse thing, because I really want Charlie Cox to play Daredevil. I really like him as Daredevil. He's like a perfect Daredevil. I, I think, actually li- really like all, pretty much all of them. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about good. Iron Fist, because I didn't even watch season two. Yeah, he's okay. He, he, do- he doesn't get the goofy nature, fun-loving nature of Iron Fist very well. Mm-hmm. He, so he's very kind of brooding and serious, especially in the first season, which was way too far. Oh. In the second season, he 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 does kind of get that fun loving because Iron Fist is a kid, dude. He's literally a kid. Yeah, you know he because he was raised by monks since he was twelve, so he doesn't really he never really grew up. That's the whole like endearing factor about Iron Fist. But um, anyway. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it kind of proves that the Netflix series aren't canon, which kind of sucks, but I hope that they'll at least pull a J.K. Simmons and be like, okay, but who else can play Daredevil or The Punisher? Yes. You know? Yes. I can. I would hope that they would do that. I hope so, too. I really do. They, they don't have to canonize the shows, but just bring back the actor. Just be like, okay, yeah, Charlie Cox is playing Daredevil, but the shows aren't canon. I'll be like, okay, fine, whatever. You know, just bring back him as Daredevil. Totally cool. That would be totally cool. But Blade, dude. Fucking Blade, dude. Yeah. What? That's awesome. Mahershala, dude, so perfect. Apparently, right after he won his Oscar for Green Book, he uh, he called up Kevin Feige right after that. And he's like, Blade, I want to play him. What? Apparently, like, That's right sick. after. Right after. And then Kevin Feige was like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But, like, where do you think Blade fits into the current Marvel universe? I really don't know. I really don't know, but it it brings up a lot of interesting questions, though. Like I got, I got it. Yeah, with the whole, I mean, obviously, like uh, Doctor Strange, he like fights kind of like demon things. Yes, like, he I does. mean, doesn't doesn't yeah. you go? They go hand in hand. They do. That is true. You know what? Maybe like he opens up a portal and all That's these like thinking. these like demons and vampires come out, and then Blade's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, not me, not not today, bitch. You know? Yeah. He just and then, then he goes into. To weird underground clubs that where they play Ramstein, Ramstein <laughs> yeah. music, and then, and then the blood comes out of the sprinklers. Yeah, and somehow Blade isn't even touched by it. Yeah, it's so great. That movie's good though. I actually haven't. I think I saw the second one. Uh, Guillermo del Toro directed that. Did it? Mm-hmm. Oh boy. The second one. I just still didn't like it though. Really? <laughs> I remember that third one being awful. Is that Trinity? The yeah, with Trinity. Ryan Reynolds? Trinity. That's the third one. It's Ooh. terrible. The first one's real good though. But it's going to be cool. We're going to see vampires in the MCU. It's like a lot of, I remember someone commented on one of the posts and they're like, really? Are we just supposed to buy the fact that vampires have been in the MCU this whole time? And well, I'm you like, have six, uh, you have six movies to, or, yeah, exactly. Or properties to decide if that's true or not. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. also that doesn't mean that they're necessarily, they were there the whole time. Right. Unless, unless they do do that and I add that and I'd kind of be like, okay, that's kind of, kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but... That, that all furthers my Men in Black thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but regardless, it'll be fucking awesome, dude. I want to see Marshall Ali kill some vampires, bro. I'm so ready. Yeah. I'm so ready. I'm with oh, you on dude, that. so good. Um, and that is Phase 4, baby. And at the end of the panel, he mentioned a little tease for Phase 5. Kevin Foggy said, Isn't it crazy that we didn't even have enough time to talk about how we're making... Black Panther 2, yeah. Captain Marvel 2, and then he's like, and I didn't even have time to talk about Fantastic Four <laughs> and the mutants. And Dude, I was like, yes. oh my god. Okay, oh. I'm one of those people, my brother hates the Fantastic I Four. I love the but, Fantastic Four. But he loves Doctor Strange. I'm, or not Doctor Strange. Doctor Doom. Uh, Doctor Doom. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. Dude, Doctor Doom is the best. He's the He's fucking, my fucking favorite. Best. I love the Fantastic Four. You know why people hate the Fantastic Four? Is because they, they have not seen it good. Good, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Marvel. Oh, dude. Oh, yes, 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 dude. I'm to- I can't I'm totally freaking in. wait. I'm totally I'm in. I'm totally fucking I'm in. I'm totally in. It's crazy. They got so many characters now. I feel like this is. Phase four 
I feel like is the passing of the torch phase. And then after that, it's like, no, we're bringing in Fantastic Four, freaking X-Men, all this baby. Cosmic like, entities. Cosmic dude. entities. And here's the crazy part about this phase. There's no end cap. There's no... This is the first phase to not have, like, an end cap. Like an Avengers? Like an Avengers. T- like an Avengers film. Like... Cause, Damn! Because every phase ended, it like, in an event film. It did! Not this one. Mm. This one doesn't have an event film at the that's end of it. Scar- that's kind of scary now that Isn't you that think crazy? about it. Yeah. So, that means it's going to lead directly into phase five. This is the first time that's happened. I don't... I don't know, man. That's crazy. Because I like the team-up movies, man. Me too, me too. They but I think... The, they make the world go round. They do, they do. <laughs> But I feel like we can have we can have patience with the. Uh... You know what it is? It's because everything is so condensed. How long did Phase One take? Phase One was like fucking. From it was from two thousand eight to, to two thousand twelve. Yeah. That's four. That's yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's five years. That's five years. Yeah. And the fact that they're condensing it into pretty much a year, just a yeah. little over a year. Mm-hmm. So I guess it doesn't feel as it's dude. I gotta tell you though, that year is gonna be bloated with oh like, yeah with Marvel content. And they're I like they basically ready. they're just taking over the world. They're like every single thing that you, if you have time to watch anything, it's gonna be catching up on Marvel shit. And I am fucking ready for it, baby. I'm ready for it. Well, at least Disney's uh, doing a two year hiatus for Star Wars though. That part's good. Yeah, that that that's needed. But uh, dude, I'm so ready. I'm so freaking ready for Phase Four, baby. Oh, I can't wait. That's exciting. Woo! All right, that took a long time. It did take a long time. Hey, when, remember when I said, it, oh, we've an hour t- tops. Yeah. Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> yep, yep, yes you were. All right, let's talk about trailers, finally. Trailer, trailer. Coming soon to a theater near you. The King's Man. No. No? No. No? No. I thought this trailer looked amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. It looks so good. Well, I guess since you don't really care for where the Kingsman is or whatever, like you probably wouldn't care for it, or you you would probably care for it more. Yeah, uh, because I wasn't expecting. First of all, this trailer came out of nowhere. I didn't even know they started filming it. it. Turns out they have a freaking trailer. I feel like we were just talking about casting news literally like the week before. Um, one thing I love about this is that it looks like it's a different film. One thing about my uh, uh, Matthew Vaughn that he does and I love is that almost every film he makes is different from the last one. Like, Kick-Ass is very different from First Class. And mm-hmm. First Class is very different from uh, Kingsman. And even Kingsman 2 is very different from Kingsman 1, even though there's still a little bit of similarity there. This looks very different from Kingsman 1 and 2. It looks much more serious and much more grounded. And I think that's needed for Kingsman, because I didn't like Kingsman 2 at all. So and, uh, See, I liked it. I yeah. wanted more of that. Nah, dude. Nah, I thought I just thought it looked so good. It looked so intense. I loved it. Mm. Really? I didn't feel I didn't feel anything. I thought I felt like it didn't really have a personality. Like I'm not saying that. Like I'm not saying it doesn't have style. It's a completely different thing. Personality and style. The style's there. I really yeah. like the uh, the camera shot with like the with where it's on the sword. Yeah, that's and that cool. looks that looks sick. Like that everything cool. looks uh, pretty cool. I just I just I don't know, man. It's kind of bland. It just kind of looks like a period piece. Really, I, dude. I I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to disagree. I really thought you would love this trailer. I'm surprised you you, you didn't. Do you miss the campy, goofy nature of the first two? Is that what you're missing? Yeah. Because that's not in this one. It looks like. Yeah, it doesn't look. It looks like they changed the tone a little bit. Yeah, but I appreciate that because I, I'm not a huge fan of the second one, and the first one I liked when I first saw it, but it, it hasn't grown well on me. So I like the fact that they're changing it up. So. Oh yeah, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you like it. I'm just not. Yeah. I'm not digging it. Oh man, that's crazy. I don't know. I'm. You excited. know what? It does kind of. It does kind of remind me, of the King Arthur trailer. <laughs> well, you know Matthew Vaughn and Guy Ritchie are almost the same. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always say that. I always say it. Like, I, I know. love them both, but. Yeah. Matthew Vaughn, I, I I hate to say call him like discount Guy Ritchie. I used to always say as like a joke. Matthew Vaughn, I'm sorry. I love you if you're listening, even though you're not listening and you won't listen to this ever. But, you know. I love them both, but their style is very similar, and I, I think know. they're friends too. Like they didn't. Probably. Like, I think Guy Ritchie produced Matthew Vaughn's first film, so they're very much kind of. I think his uh, like uh, Ritchie's earlier films are a lot different than Matthew Vaughn's films. Right, but I mean, like 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 uh, Snatch. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah. Uh, Smoke and Barrels. But if you look at something like Sherlock Holmes, it it's and like 
it's very reminiscent of kind of Matthew Vaughn ish kind of like the crazy camera moves and like the slow motion. Yeah. You know how it speed ramps from crazy motion to slow motion. It, it's very similar, mm-hmm. very similar style. But I love them both. They both make great movies. Um. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I can't believe I'm looking forward to this more than you, but I am. It's shocking, right? Shocking. The King's Man. I showed it to everybody that that enjoyed. Like I showed it to my brother, who's a big fan of the King's Man. Yeah. He was like. Uh, really? Yeah. Everyone on Stardust is loving it. Yeah. You know, you're crazy, you're crazy man. All right, let's talk about hustlers. Strippers uh, taking money from. Big, it feels like, it feels like a lot dudes. of movies are like following uh, the suit of of widows. widows I know yeah. we've said this before. Yes. And I'm gonna say it again. We're probably gonna say it again because it's it seems like what's in right now. Yeah, it really is. It's pink and blue widows because that's the color scheme of this movie. It's like pink and blue. Mm. Yeah, that's what it is. It's J Lo. I don't like J Lo. What uh, Constance Wu is that her name? Constance Wu, J Lo. Uh, there's a couple other. Got a lot of like rappers and shit. Yeah, like, Cardi I saw Lizzo B. was in there. Yeah, Lizzo, Cardi B, is in it, and um, I don't know. Just doesn't, not... doesn't seem like my type of thing. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like, I don't know. There's style to it. I'll give them that, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of substance there. Yeah, if, I think if the lead was different, maybe I'd it, it, I'd change my tune. I don't like J Lo. I don't think I've ever liked a single thing that she's Why been a part of. M- movies, uh, singing her like her music career, I'm just not. I don't get it. I liked her in Selena. I thought she was pretty good in that. Right, Never see seen it. How about Selena, the singer? No. Who was killed? You never seen that? That was yeah. a good one. You should watch that one. That one's pretty good. Um, yeah, it just doesn't seem like it, it's very interesting to me. There, there is kind of a. I remember, like, I, I barely remember the trailer. Um, there's like a turn that happens where it kind of turns into like a, a heist film almost, kind of like Widows, and they're like trying to steal money from like these dudes, but they're all strippers and they're using their like sexuality to to, to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. it it's my thing. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Judy trailer too. This trailer, remember last time we reviewed Judy, the yeah. trailer, and we're like, we need a we second really, trailer. We didn't really have a lot to we go We didn't really have a lot to go off of. I feel like this trailer sold me on it a little sold, more. Sold you? Not completely, uh-huh. but sold me on it more. I think I, I think I liked the second half of the trailer. Uh, I really wasn't vibing with the, fir- the first uh-huh. half. I still think Renee Zellweger is a very weird choice for well, Judy Well, because it's definitely, it's, she's playing her in her later years. Yeah, that's true, that's true. That's true. I don't really know how to feel, to feel about her character, because it kind of seems like, you know, she's a pill popper and stuff like that. I don't know what they're going to do. What What do they want to say about her, Judy Garland? I don't know. Maybe they just want to tell her life story. Uh, you know what really kind of intrigued me about the trailer, though, is that freaking Woody's leg just came off. Oh, no. No! What really intrigued me about the trailer is the fact that they kind of go into flashbacks of her during filming of, like, The Wizard of Oz. I think that was probably the most intriguing aspect to me. How it goes back in time to that. You know, do you remember those shots in yeah, the trailer? I saw that. Yeah, I thought that was cool, but it was very little, and I really feel like they are going to explore. They're going to downplay the shit. They're going to downplay the, sh- the shit out of it. Um, but I still think it looks good. I know a guy on Stardust who said he actually saw a test screening. He was invited to a test screening for the film, and he said it was a really good film. Is what oh, he okay. said. Okay. So. Yeah, that gives me a little more more hope for it. You're not supposed to do that though when you see. No, yeah, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to talk about it. But he did. He was an older guy. But what are they gonna do? Arrest him? Uh, No. uh, Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of looking forward to it. You know. Yeah, I think. uh, I don't know. I really don't know, man. Yeah. I really don't. I. I just. I'm. I'm kind of boycotting. I think. Biopics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm just a little tired. I think of them. they need to fix them. Yeah, for sure. They're, it's they're the same broken. same damn formula every time. Yeah. Every time, which is so weird because no one's life is that similar, but the damn formula is the exact same every time. It's like my god, you know. Yeah, mm. and the the thing is, has like somebody who prides himself on being able to like see something that they can fix or whatever. Like, I want to... That's something that I want to be able to do. I really don't know what to do with biopics. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's hard. But then, I, but then when I saw Hugo, I was kind of reminded, like, oh, like, you, you can kind of think outside of the box yeah. like that. But then you got the people who want to be more accurate, but then it, it the movie just kind of becomes boring because real life is not fun. It's not fun to watch. Dude, but then um, I, I heard somebody... Or my mom was telling me about that... Uh, that girl from Smallville 
Oh, Chloe yeah, Sullivan? Yeah, she got caught in that, that cult. In that cult, yeah. And it's like, whoa. And somebody said something about, like, a biopic or whatever. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting story. Because yeah. I'd like to know more about what happened there. That's true. Like, that's crazy. But I don't know. What's so different about Judy Garland's life that, like, hasn't been... Because we've yeah. seen so many yeah. of, like Hollywood yeah, yeah. people, yeah. a lot of music, a lot of music people too. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I get where you're coming from, but I, I, I I'm gonna still give it a chance. It's still gonna be good. I, I didn't even get to see Stan and Ollie, which I, I kind of wanted oh, to I see. I totally forgot about that movie. Yeah, I didn't get to see that one just because I was so burnt out on biopics. Um, yeah. 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 I'm a little, I'm apprehensive. Yep. Yep. Okay, the next one, you have it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's talk about probably the scariest trailer that we have to talk about. Cats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got him, you got, got him. I was like, you didn't you didn't do it in order. No, yeah. Yeah, dude, what the fuck, What bro? the fuck was that? What the fuck? <laughs> what was I that, I saw that dude? in immediate, but the first thing I thought of, I'm like, this is what people th- like, Nightmares think. Nightmares about? This is what people think when they see anime. Yes. This is it. This is like, ugh, like, like cringe. Like, like, what is this? Okay, first of all, I don't even know where to freaking start with this. You Bro- can't make the Broadway musical cats look good in any scenario. You either have people dressed up as cats, like Cat in the Hat style, like Mike Myers, Cat in the Hat style, or you do this weird blend CGI thing, which is what they're doing. It doesn't matter. You can't make cats look cool. You can't. I've never seen the musical, so I don't want to be that I don't guy. Know a thing about it. But I know for a fact you you just can't make Cats cool. Cats is known to be a good musical, but it's one of the goofiest musicals ever made. Like at least in my opinion. Like, come on, dude! It's people dressed up as cats. How do you make that good? Stuff on the Broadway does not always adapt. To the big screen. And this to me is just pure proof of that. You can't always adapt Broadway shows to film and expect it to work. Mm. It works on the Broadway because we expect we expect the weirdness of having people dressed up as cats. Like, that's fine. Because we accept that on the Broadway. On a big screen, that just don't work, man. Yeah, uh, no, nah, I agree. I just think they're, they're hideous. This has been the talk of the film world for like a while. Up until yesterday, before Phase 4, this is what people were talking about. You know Fangoria, the horror comic? Mm, no. Or sorry, the horror magazine? They changed their name on Twitter to Fergoria and changed their logo to like a cat as like a joke. Because they were like... Because it's terrifying? Because it's terrifying. They, they said, nothing we ever publish will be as scary as this trailer. And so they did it as like a joke. Mm-hmm. Because it is horrifying. And you know what's crazy about it? The cast they got. Dude, Dame Judy Jet Dench, freaking Ian McKellen is in it. Jason Derulo? What? Idris Elba is in oh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaking Taylor Swift? Rebel Wilson? Yeah. This is the weirdest thing I have seen. It's so weird. And I get that Tom Hooper, who directed Le- Have you seen Les Mis? Les Mis? Have you yeah, seen it? Yeah. I didn't like Les Mis, man. I, you it, know, I'm going to be honest, like. I liked it, but I feel like if I were to watch it, I probably wouldn't. I feel like it was way too long, and it was all singing. It was, it was so all long. all singing. Well, that's, f- that's just not your cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea. I will say that the style looks more bright than Les Mis, because Les Mis was so friggin' depressing. But why would you want to adapt Cats? That's just weird in general to me. Like, if I had, if I was at a studio, and they're like, look, this is what we're doing. We want to adapt cats. I would be like, nope, and walk out immediately because there is no conceivable way to make that look. Do you serious. know what the story is of cats? I don't. Actually. I was gonna say I don't know either, and by watching this trailer, I'm no closer. Yeah, I know that it's about alley cats. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, you know, Spielberg was actually attached to do a cats movie one time, and he was going to make it animated. And oh. that's the way it should have been. Animated with animated real w- cats. Yeah, see, animated would have been a lot better. It would have been better. But they're trying to do like this blend where they're like, let's make it Broadway but not. And I'm like, this is weird. This just doesn't work. Like, you can't make cats cool. You can't. 
It's cats, guys. Well, I don't think Tom Hooper's the type of person to make it cool. He wants to pay tribute to the to the musical. I get it, but I just don't understand why. Why cats? Why cats? Uh, I feel like there's a. Are there any cats like fans out there? Really? There used to be. Yeah. They, they, they I used to remember in the '90s when I was a kid. Everyone used to talk about that shit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, dude. This is just one of the weirdest trailers I have ever seen. It was so weird. Yeah, it was weird. It was so weird. And I don't think I'll ever, even watching the film, I don't think I'll ever get used to, like, the sight of them. No, it's creepy. Yeah. It's creepy. And there's no excuse, really, anymore to have... I heard it's a blend of both practical and CG, and it looks so weird. Yeah. It just looks so odd. You know how we just did our best visual effects and we're like, it's the best when they do both practical and visual. Not always. Not always. <laughs> and this was proof of that. Um, they're really banking off. You know what? Just the trailer seemed a little desperate too. Did you notice that? They're like, from Tom Hooper, director of Les Miserables and The King's Speech and the choreographer of Hamilton based on Andrew Lloyd Webber's like, visionary play. And it's like... Okay, we get it. Like the cats, the cats is special no, to people. But known, it's known, but it doesn't adapt well to screen, man. At least in my opinion, the movie could be good. I don't know. I'm. I always give movies some benefit of the doubt. You know, Tom Hooper's a good director. He knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But it just seems like a very strange prospect to begin with to adapt cats. I just. I feel like that's a no-win scenario just from the get-go. From concept to screen, that just doesn't seem like yeah. it works. Yeah, I'm no, I'm not interested. No, no, it was terrifying. <laughs> Dame Judi Dench as a cat is weird to me. I like that you could tell who everybody was like right away. Like, yeah, right. Jason Derulo, by the way, has no more street cred. <laughs> has no more street cred after this. Oh my god. Um. Okay. It Chapter 2, Trailer oh, 2. Oh, okay, the one that I thought you were going to talk about. The final trailer. First of all, let's just appreciate the fact that this is the second trailer, and they put out the fact that it is the final trailer. Uh -huh. This is how you're supposed to do trailers. Do a little teaser, and then this, and then that's it. It looks real good. It looks fucking amazing. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm actually you're... really looking forward to this one. Right? It looks really good. And it looks like they're exploring more of the weird from the It books, and I'm excited to see that. Mm -hmm. You know? Because you know the story of Pennywise, right? Like, what he is? Uh, for the most part, yeah. He's like an alien. Yeah. From, like, another dimension. You know the creatures in the mist? He's one of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like... I, uh, I did not know. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. He's actually, like, a really shitty version of them. Like, they kicked him out because he sucks at his job so much, <laughs> apparently. And, um... Well, he seems to be pretty good at it from here. Does he, though? He couldn't kill four kids. Four kids beat him, so it's like, you know. But, no, it does. It looks terrifying. The cast is amazing. They casted it perfectly, dude. The like, cast is insane. It's insane. And it just, like, kind of blows my mind that they were able to attract so many, like... A-listers for yeah. a horror film? Yeah. Dude. That never happens. It never happens. And it looks like the budget has been amped up, and it looks like... The style has also amped up. Yeah. Well, it looks so good. I'm liking the style. I'm liking the set pieces, man. Yeah, I like dude. That, that mirror. That oh scene. yeah, yeah. That's so good. That's good. I really liked how they individualize like each character and like their you know their special fears because everyone's different and stuff yeah. like that. I really like that they they delve into that. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. I I can't wait. I, I just, oh my gosh, dude, I was almost on the verge of tears from this trailer just because it looks so good. Not because I was emotional, just because I was like, this looks so good! Like, the intensity was so good. Mm -hmm. I loved it. The music is so good. It's always intense throughout. Oh, it looks just so good. Um, it comes out soon, right? I think it does. I think September is okay, when it comes yeah, out. Cool. <laughs> I love that laugh, too, dude. It's so good. Bill Skarsgård is a really good Pennywise. He took Pennywise, he made it his own. Like, it's really good. Like, this is a scary Pennywise. Yeah. And it's uh it's pretty awesome. I like when he's not like CG'd in yeah. that scene. I'm like oof. Yeah. It's creepy. Creepy. It's creepy. I like his like creepy smile. You know, <laughs> in that mirror sequence or whatever. You just hit me with that smile and yeah. like it looks nothing like his smile. Well <laughs> it's very mean, special. Yes, that's for sure. He's got his fucking like tongue on the door. 
<laughs> or whatever. He's just salivating, dude. Yeah. He's like, yes. Yeah, dude. Can't wait. Yeah. It looks so good. Um. All right, let's talk about Ass Astra, trailer two. Or, I'm sorry, Ad, Ad Astra. Astra. Man, this freaking... Voice to text. Voice to text, dude. Ad Astra trailer 2, uh, this also sold me much more on Agreed. the movie. Much more. Agreed. This trailer seemed like this is what the movie's going to be more about. It's going to be a more slow burn drama character piece. character piece. More so than like the first trailer, which tried to almost sell it like as an action movie. It kind of like, tried to sell it as like a, like a gravity spectacle film, and it really wasn't doing all that much for me. And then you f we finally got to see like a little bit more of like the, the, the set... Mm -hmm. Or like where where everything's gonna take place and like that that scene where they're they're driving the the rovers, rovers. through the moon yeah like that looks sick it does it really looks sick and I'm sure they put that shot in the trailer because that's the only like slight bit of action you're gonna get in the movie well there's a couple of scenes that like when he's falling off the yeah when, he, when he's falling off there's a couple there's a couple scenes where I'm like okay that could be cool yeah yeah but th it it sold me much more yeah because I think this is much more indicative of what the movie's gonna be like. It's not going to be like this crazy gravity spectacle film. It's going to be a character piece. Mm -hmm. And I'm ex I I can't like I wasn't expecting it. It was one of the most surprising trailers to me because I was like, "All right, I'm actually kind of on board now." You know? I went up a star. I, I figured I figured it could uh it could win me over. Something yeah. something told me, I don't know, man. I feel like sci-fi movies are such a it's just, so easy. It's yeah. such an easy way into my heart, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It seems more sci than fi though, I will say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, James Gray's directing it, who did Lost City of Zed. I really like that film, so I'm, I'm excited to see what he does with this. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. Mm -hmm, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's, uh, cause I kind of, your boy kind of wants to get out of here. I ain't gonna lie. No offense. No, for, no problem. Uh, let's talk about Top Gun Maverick. Have you seen the first one? Uh, yeah. I have not. I have no idea what Top Gun's uh, about. it's campy as fuck. Is it campy it's as campy, fuck? It's campy, it's hokey, it's got Is that it's three charm, songs it's the it's plays Danger Zone three times. Really? In it, so that just tells you right there. It's is just, it an action it's a, movie? It's a macho, beefy movie. You know what I'm saying? Is it an action movie? Like, is there uh, action? Like, do they fight people? Like, well, what? Yeah, they they're basically like training, and uh, that doesn't mean that there's like there is some intensity to it. Sometimes it's not really that. I'm confused about. The, I've always been confused about the plot of Top Gun. What's the conflict? Like, is it a drama? Is it an action? Is there an enemy? Like, I'm they're confused. basically just like. In a training camp, so they can learn how to fight. Fucking, it's basically just an ace combat movie. I don't really know. Oh, that's weird. It's it's not um, it's it doesn't really explore that much of like the enemy territory. Like it's basically like them just kind of hanging out or whatever. He's like he fall he falls in love. He's got his best friends. They're just kind of boys. They just hang. Yeah. It's like you know, it's eighties movie. Okay. Interesting. 80s movies like kind of puts plot, I feel like, yeah. second. You know? Yeah, that's true. A lot of people love the film, though. It has a big cult following. I'm not crazy about it. My mom and my brother love it, and my brother's like, dude, this movie's gonna suck because it doesn't have Kenny Loggins. And I'm like, that's a good thing, because this movie is basically just showing the fact that he is so dedicated that he's gonna he's, be a yeah. real fucking pilot. Yeah, he's he flew all that. That's all real. I know. Isn't that crazy? They wouldn't... They wouldn't, sh they wouldn't have that kind of camera work if they weren't if it wasn't real no he actually became a freaking he's flying fighter jets dude this guy's insane dude he's, he's one of the best actors working today he's just one of the best i love tom cruise i do too mm -hmm. i cannot believe he's actually flying these freaking fighter jets dude that's insane he's a nut job he is dude but in a good way in a good way he's like the buster keaton kind yeah exactly um yeah, I'm really liking the cinematography for this it. thing. I'm really yeah. liking. I'm really liking the dedication. Yep. And yep. I like that they're. It looks more serious. Than it the first does one. look more serious, which is kind of mm -hmm. what's selling me on it, and it kind of makes me want to re go back and watch it because it's been a minute since I've seen it. But yeah, I just wasn't really a fan of it, and I'm glad that they're the first staying one away you mean, from it. Right? Yeah, I'm not yeah. really crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a product of, of its time. Yeah, for sure. Um. Is directed by Joseph Kaczynski, I think his name is. He did, he did Tron Legacy, Oblivion, and then Only the Brave. I actually like most... I really... I like Tron Legacy. I think that movie gets a I bad like rap. I like Tron Legacy, too. Um, and I actually really like Oblivion. I know that movie gets really bad rap. I really like that. I thought it was a cool homage to old 50s sci-fi movie. Um, also, uh, Only the Brave I haven't seen, but I heard that's great. That has like a 93% Rotten Tomatoes. I heard it's absolutely it fantastic. Steve Carell. No, no, no. It's... Uh, it's the one with like the 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 California firefighters who are like, like the they're fighting like forest fires. Only the brave. I hear it's really good. Um, 
Yeah, but anyway, my point is, is that his cinematography in all of his movies is, is so good. It's it's always like the driving force to his movies. Like his cinematography is always so good. Yeah. And um, I'm looking forward to it, man. I don't know anything about the first one, but this you one probably looks. I have more... to watch it. But I see. Maybe you don't even have to watch it. That's a, that's kind of like what I like about it. Yeah. Is that it feels so distant from it. It does. It looks serious though. I really like that line at the end where he's like, "You're you're becoming irrelevant." And he's like, "Maybe, but not today." You know, I was like, "That's great, God, so good." Where's Val Kilmer though? He's probably dead. <laughs> was he in the? He wasn't in the trailer. He was in the first movie though, Goose, right? That's Goose. Ooh. Yeah, or in the first uh, movie he Ooh. was in. And then it shows in the trailer in Maverick. It shows um, him at a casket, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I bet you Goose is in that." Maybe I should watch the first one. Yeah. Okay. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. That kind of hints that I'm very wrong because he probably dies in the first movie now that you... That I, yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think it looks good, though. As a guy who hasn't seen the first one, I'm intrigued. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob reboot. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Are me. you a big Jay and Silent Bob guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about... I, know I really like about Clerks, and I really like Chasing Amy. I saw Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. I saw. Him, I remember liking Mallrats as a kid. I don't know if I'd like it now. I'm not huge on Kevin Smith. I feel like if you like Kevin Smith and you like Jane Silent Bob, you would look forward to this movie much more than I am. Mm-hmm. I really feel like this movie is just banking on its cameos, dude. There's so many. Dude, and you can't even... Dude, the second to the last one. Oh, sh- Q. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, are you... That's Q. Yeah, I was, I was so like, I was like, that's so sick, bro. I'm like, oh my god, I couldn't believe it. I, I got really amped because I'm like, I know Nico's gonna love that. Yeah, I, oh, th- I did love that. What do you think about this reboot? And I'm like, is that fucking cute? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, th- it is banging on the cameos. I think the plot's all right, but I really like. Um, I really like what I what they do with the movies. They make them kind of segmented, where like it seems like kind of some of the bits are just kind of like a parody. Yeah. And like uh, they don't really, they don't really matter to the canon of the movie in itself. Yeah, that's true. Like they have that Scooby Doo bit in one of them. Yeah, yeah. And it's like that literally has nothing to do with no. the rest of the movie. But man, the amount of cameos though, like Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. I know yeah, those are com- characters. Yeah, from, they're coming back. They're coming back. But then you got like Chris Hemsworth, Rosario yeah. Dawson. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy, dude. <laughs> so, man, I don't know, man. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it, it could be funny. It could be funny. I'm not necessarily a fan of the jokes, but, like, I, I'm definitely a fan of the energy. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting. Why did he pull down his pants, though, and tuck his dick between his legs? That was just so know. weird. What was that Buffalo Bill? It was a Buffalo Bill reference. But oh, was it? From Silence of the Lambs. Oh, interesting. Interesting. But I don't know why. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty funny, but I feel like I'm not, because I'm not huge into Kevin Smith movies, um, I'm not as looking forward to it. But it could be really funny, and maybe I'll see it on an off day. I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go watch yeah. James Bond Bob reboot. When Why you don't not? have like a thousand Marvel movies to see. Exactly. When, I, when I'm not watching Marvel, I'll be like, all right, I'll watch a, a Marvel lover, <laughs> a comic book geek. I'll watch it only for you, Q. Um... Yeah, that, that, that was cool, though. Um, yeah, it looks good. It looks, looks all right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking it. Yep, yep. Here's a more of a series. Oh. Uh, I, I put this on here because I know you love The Witcher games. What do you think? No. I have nothing to say about it because I have no idea about anything. They did some weird shit with some of the characters. I know it's based on the book, so it's not necessarily like... Oh, is The Witcher a book? The Witcher's a book. And then like the made the a video 90s? game? In the 90s? It's like a Pol- Polish writer. So what's the video game? Is that based off the book? I mean, it, it's based off the characters, but I don't think it follows it, like, necessarily. Oh, okay. Uh, they did some, like, I'm kind of confused with some of the stuff that they, they showed in there. Uh-huh. Just because, you know, I, I know, like, like uh, they did something with, like, the character Yennefer, like, her mouth's, like, all fucked up and shit. Yeah, and I, I saw that. Oh, that was, was weird. Like, I was like, what is what's, that? What's going on with that? Maybe it's from the book. Because he, like, ends up with her, like. Oh, for, really? Yeah. Huh. For a little bit. Depends on your decisions. That's one of the things about the game is like you just des- you decide you make decisions, and necessarily you're not gonna be with uh, or you're not gonna have the same outcome. So I'm sh- I'm curious to see like what the books had in mind for for the narrative. Yeah. But I don't know. I just I just don't. It doesn't have the same feel. 
Yeah. And that's kind of upsetting. I feel you. I, I've never played the games, so I can't really comment on much of it. I mean, as a person who just watches media, what do you think? I It, no, it didn't really stand out. No. Nothing about it really kind of clicked with me. Um, Henry Cavill... Looks kind of strange. Like he the wig look just looks. The wig just doesn't look right. Mm. Um, I was just confused. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah. I was just. I'm like, what is going on right now? I, I didn't know. I really didn't know. So. Yeah. I hope that it does because you you can fuck up fantasy, uh, so easily and you know it just doesn't look, really look that concise from the trailer. Yeah. Which might be a turn off to normal people. Which might be a turn off to like, uh, how you know the future for it. Yeah. But I do like the fact that uh, Cavill is like really into video games. He, yeah, he, apparently he really loves the Witcher games. Which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Apparently he played like multiple playthroughs of um, Witcher Three. Yeah. So. Same with everybody, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. Well, that's our Comic Con recap. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, we're uh, we're cutting everything else, and actually, I don't think either of us have anything recently seen. Oh, you know what? I got something. Uh, vlog number one. You should check it out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot you were going to talk about that. Yeah. Right. Vlog number one. That's my recently seen. Uh, I made a found footage horror film. And if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. Uh, it's really cool. My friend Trevor and Scott... Uh, uh, my, it's not his real name. My friend Trevor and Skyler. Alfonso are in it. And uh, they do a really great job. It's a horror comedy satire on vlog culture so if you don't like vlog culture especially the vlog culture of people like logan paul jake paul david dobrik you might like this because it's kind of a commentary on how people in that culture are kind of uh disillusioned and they're a-holes mm -hmm. you know so yeah so yeah it turned out really well i got to see like some of the bits from before mm -hmm. it was put together, yep. and uh, to see the final product, it looked uh, absolutely it came around. absolutely. Jordan did the music for it, and that dude, the boy, the boy, yeah, he he tied that whole thing together, dude. He tied the whole thing together. His music gave me goosebumps. I was like, nice. That's cool. Yeah, was like, it was. It was. That was good. Thanks, so. man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. So go watch that uh, if you want. I got more. We got more found footage related content coming up. Actually, I got my top five found footage horror films coming on Nico Nico Nine, and then I'm gonna finally post that interview that we did Ooh. with the Cats of Paranormal Activity because I feel like this would make sense. Yeah. Because, yeah. Also, the 20th anniversary of Blair Witch Project was last week, so this is just something, weird timing, isn't it? For so, something about found. Uh, yeah. This this the I don't know the what is the, what do they call it like the the, uh, the zeitgeist <laughs> the. Lip at the I don't know whatever. Okay, okay. I give up. You give up. I mentally clocked that dude when we were when I was definitely wrong with that hour thing. How yeah, long? dude. It's probably been like over two. I think it's yeah, it's over two. All right, I have no quote right now, so I think we should just say so so and get out of here. And say, so. it, and say it off too. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. All right. See ya.